I am here vibing with one of the greatest repositories of Jamaica's musical history, a famed ethnomusicologist, lecturer, radio personality, sound system operator, publicist, artist manager, and record producer. His parents named him Dennis Howard, and today he shares his story. Dr. Dennis Howard. Respect, man. Thanks, oh, for, love, man. thanks for having me. The historian, yeah. the musical <laughs> historian. <laughs> Reach them! Always make sure the message I reach them! All is well, sir? Yeah, man, great. It's a job yeah. staying in the man's presence. Yeah. When I sit down with one of the man, we have a lot of the knowledge when I seek. So, they're going to seek it. <laughs> it's everything good. Well, it's, it's there to share, it's you know. It's there to share. Yeah, yeah, of course, absolutely. It's our Jamaican heritage. Yes. So, we have to share it. And we are currently mm -hmm. in music. The Beat Street the district. Beat Street. Yeah, Orange Prince Street, Charles Street. Lego. Yeah, jazz what about? Ja yeah. yeah. What else about? Um, the Treasure Isle around the road runs up. Yeah, and also Rockers, <laughs> just up the road. Yeah. You know, so. And uh, in other, that general area, the man born and grew up? Um, no, no. I, I, I grew up in, 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 in Western, Eastern Kingston. East, okay. I East. grew up in, in, on Romlin. Romlin? Yeah, so I started out on Ialban oh, Street when I was, that. was, 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 was was a little kid. Then I went to Blake Road uh, during primary school days. And then the rest of primary school and high school, I was at uh, Rumley Inn Rumley in Eastern Inn. Kingston. They call it Rose Gardens Rose now. Gardens? Yeah. Oh, OK, yeah. OK, OK. And as I mentioned, school, where were the places that you attended school, though? Holy Family. Mm. That's down on Law Street. And then Casey. Oh, you're a case, you <laughs> Yeah, I did six form at Camper Down, though. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. So why not Casey? Ah, uh, uh, let's not get into that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one of those things. One of those things. Yeah. <laughs> so six form at Sea Down. Yeah. After after Sea Down, you would have done many things in education, re-education. Yeah. But we'll pick up that. Yeah. Soon. Yeah. What was it like though growing up back then, financially speaking? Uh, people would say that we were poor, <laughs> but I never realized that we were poor yeah. because uh, my father was around, my mother was around. Uh, I grew up with grandaunts and uncles and I, a big extended family. So, you know, there was not much of the suffering and, and struggle in terms of, you know, Food and food clothing and all of them things there. Yeah, we, 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 but, but of course we were poor. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, but the parents and, and family relatives ensure that. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, you I never a, feel that to the core. No, no, no. I, I, I remember the days when my mom used to, like, in, on, on, in Christmas, she would take us and she'd do some shopping and then uh, she would discreetly put away those stuff. And then my father would come for me, and then he would do additional <laughs> shopping okay. for, for me. Yeah. So I remember one time, uh, we loved Clark shoes mm -hmm. and George Webb. So uh, my mother had bought a Clark's for me, and a black one, really loved it. So when my father took me to buy shoes now, he insisted on buying the same shoes. <laughs> and I'm saying to him, No, you know, I don't know. No, I said, I don't want this one because I know I have it I'm already. <laughs> so I said, No, man, this is a shoe. Because what he used to do, you know, any shoes that he has, I have yeah, to get have it. One too. Every, every pants, that because back in them days, you make pants lent. Mm. You know, every, every pants that I, he, he had, I like had that. one. Every shirt that he had, I yeah, had one. Word. So I'm saying, no, I have the shoes, you have to get it. So I said, all right, guess what? Here's the compromise. Give me the brown one. Oh, so you have a black one and, and the brown, brown one. one. <laughs> and when you say father, you are referring to the great Jimmy Solo. James Solo, Jimmy Solo. Legendary. And, and his musical contribution is steep in history. Yeah, man, uh, one of the original or one of the earliest dance promoters uh, in, 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 in Western Kingston. Mm -hmm. Promoting dance with every legendary sound that you every can think of. Song. Every one of them. V Rocket, Coxon, Duke Creed, Tom the Great Sebastian, a bunch of them. Yeah. You know, and then ap apart from that, he had a, a bar right at, at at Charles Street and between Oxford Street and Pink Lane. Okay. And guess what was what was the other road over 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 from from, from Pink Lane? 
Trans Trillion. Bond Street. Bond Street. Oh, Bond where the Street. fame Treasure Isle Treasure. was. You were created. So as a little kid, I grew up uh, seeing all of the, 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 the entertainers Going rehearsing and, 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 and waiting to, to, to be auditioned. And then some of them would come to the bar first, you know, to get the oh, courage to face <laughs> Duke Creed. And, 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 then, and then if they get if they got through, and if they didn't get through, they'd come to they'd the bar <laughs> and take another drink, you know. And I, I remember vividly seeing you, Roy, always at the corner of, of Bond Street, over the other side of, of Treasure Isle, just chilling and standing at the corner. Honestly, I can't remember a lot of the persons that I used to see because right, I was so, so young. young. Mm. So I can't tell you I remember seeing Brent Dow or I seen John Holt. I just remember you, Roy. For some strange reason, I remember you, Roy. But I remember Duke Creed now out with him, with him, with, him, with, him, with him pistol and him shotgun. So hold on. So you had two pistols. Yeah, man, and a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. And, and, and just pacing... Pacing the front of his, his, his liquor store with all of his, his, his liquor outside. No, I, it, it was all for sure, you know, because so nobody. Liquor outside. Yeah. But nobody them stuck up. Trouble nobody not trouble <laughs> thing. thing. But you, you know, is, is the bravado and the, the man that he was. Me, I've heard about the, the pistol. Yeah. I never hear about the shotgun. Yeah, man, I'm a shotgun to man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. The legendary dude. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. How many, how many siblings? Uh, I have. How much sisters now? I think it's eight sisters. Mm. And I have four brothers. One died. Okay, my So brother, it's only three. Yeah. yeah. I know. And I'm the and I'm the first born. First born? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that is still around. Is is the old lady still with us? No, 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 no. She, 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 she left us early. Early? Like, yeah, 49. Okay. So, yeah. Just when she was about to to to, to celebrate her 50th birthday, she died. My unexpectedly. Man. Yeah, man. You're 49. I would have expect yeah. that unexpected. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So growing up now around the heartbeat of the music now, mm -hmm. Dennis, in, obviously, it, you're going to take on to it. Without, without you even conscious of it. You, 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 uh, listen, I used to pass Bob Marley. I yell up Bob Marley and he wouldn't even look for you. Really? No, it was a guy where you don't, you don't. I because I I became I became conscious of the whalers because of my father. Oh, okay. Because him of the music, and I remember the the Soul Revolution part a part two album. We call it part two because Scratch Scratch forgot to him never him run out of the 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 the, 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 the Soul Revolution album okay. but he had a dub album. Oh. So when he run out of the 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 the, 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 first, the, the album. first album cover. If you use the, the part two, which is the dub, to put the regular, re regular uh, album, album in. Mm. So most people call it part Soul two. Revolution Part yeah. Two, but it was really the part two was really the dub. So I knew of, and then Jukebox, I had a Jukebox next to where I live, and my father always had a bar with Jukebox in it. And them time the Jamaican music don't play nowhere but in Jukeboxes and, and, and sound systems. Okay. So I was aware, and then at home. So I was aware of Bob and just knew something was special about Bob. And so when I was passing, I would say Bob right out at, at, at Beeson Street. I would, and at King Street, it would be Derek Harriet. Mm. And by the time I reach Orange Street, it would be Clancy Eccles. Clancy. And if I walk on Charles Street, it would be Lee Scratch and, and, and above Boop, which I, this is how I, I know him. Oh. That, is, that is Prince Buster. So I am walking in this area and I am just seeing all of the, the, the luminaries, them mm. every day, you know. The legendary names, and they are called the Yeah, man. Names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Bob now at no yell. Uh, <laughs> no, I was. I, I, I give you another example. I was just talking to 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 the last time I spoke to 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 Bob was in 1978. Kid in high school, see me, and a, a, one of the selectors from my father's son, Shanghai Prince. Prince and I were standing out at Jazzot, and after the concert the next day, Bob drove down in the, his VW van, white VW van, and he see us and say, yo, what's going on? We're Bucky. That is Bucky Marshall. He was looking for Bucky Marshall. So we said, check over that house, which Roy Francis family, producer Roy right Francis. From up, uh, mixing Lab. Mixing Lab, yeah. It's Rosalind him come from, you know. So he, <laughs> his family had a, 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 a house. 
over on the other side of Jazzot. Okay. So we said, check in there. It might be in there. So when he came out now, because Kaya, the album Kaya, Kaya. Had just come out, and, and we thought that it was one of the greatest albums of all times, but he never performed any of the songs from it. So we said to him, Bob, Sing those songs. No, 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 no. You can't ask Bob for sing song. <laughs> he said, Bob, why oh, you not sing nothing from Kaya? I'm just look at us and smile and go in and vehicle. I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> you know? Why you see your father so on his name? Shanghai. Shanghai, Shanghai Solophonic. Okay. Yeah. First, actually, I hear the name. So, yeah. you know, I learned, I learned yeah. it. Yeah. Shanghai. Yeah. And you said, Bucky used to live. Bucky, I, listen, because of my father, I used to hang out with Bucky Marshall, Claudia Massop. Uh, fed them up. Fed, no, not fed them not up. Fed no. up. No. I used to say fed them up, but I never used to. Bore boy, bore boy. boy, and 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 uh, uh, what him name man? The other, the other, they did have the bar, Jimmy. Baya Mitchell. Baya Mitchell. All of them are my brethren. <laughs> I grew up with them. Hang out, driving them, you know, in a them car with my father, and and them type of stuff there. Yeah, man. But yeah. everybody link up <laughs> there is one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then and then and then Claudia Massop was a good friend of my mother's. Oh, okay. So he used to come come check us at the house and come check my mother and and check us and stuff. I remember one day we were at a party because my mother and father started carrying me to parties early, you know. Mm. I remember by ten o'clock me want to sleep on Jimmy and for carrying me home, you know. <laughs> Because parties used to start early them times. Okay. Yeah. Parties start from like 6 o'clock. Oh, string. yeah? Yeah, man. Six, six, six string up. PM. 6 p.m. This new <laughs> phenomenon of people going out is a recent phenomenon. Uh, 6 a.m. People might have a party. Party now. Like yeah. So parties start, things set string up, and my father used to carry me. And by yeah. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, touch him and say, oh, sleep, and then carry me home back. So, so, so I remember now when I'm adult now, not adult, but Young, in, big boy in terms of in high school and stuff, uh, there was a, a, a session round at Wildman Street Success Club. Mm. So I live at Romley and Wildman Street is the next street. So I saw Massop vehicle and I, I never bothered to go into the dance. So I waited outside because I know my father was in there with him too. Mm. So when, 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 when I, because I know him and stuff, I catch up on the BMW, man. <laughs> catch up on the BMW. So I come and say, yo, where are you from a vehicle? <laughs> say, oh, are you? <laughs> All right. Glad you're yeah. awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, growing up, you know, as I say, around the music. Yeah. You say subconsciously, it starts seeping on your pores. Yeah, but All right. Let me tell you why. Um, my aunt that we grew up with, she... She, she, she was one of the Windrush people. So okay. she came back home in the 70s. Oh, okay. And she carried a bunch of the, 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 the what they called the Blue Beat, which was really scary. Mm -hmm. She carried back the, the Prince Buster and all of them songs there. I am not hearing these things on radio, you know, because they don't play on radio. And by the time she brought them back, it was in the 70s, so a lot of sound system weren't playing those songs. So every Sunday... When I grew up, she used to start. It was a relay in my house mm. because we have my mother lived there, my grandmother lived there, my other grand aunt lived there, two grand aunts lived there. And so it was a, like a relay. She would start the ball with, with, with her playing. She stuck up on her stereogram, or radiogram as it was called, and she used to play all of these 30 pieces of silver, what a hard man for dead, all of these things, Monty Morris and stuff. Because she brought them back from England, you know. Mm. So I was introduced to those songs, not via radio, radio or Jamaica. But I go by England because my auntie bring them back home. So that was one one thing. Then now my other grand aunt, who was more a gospel and a country person. So she, after my aunt Auntie Winnie start start, the, start <laughs> the really got to Auntie Margaret. Mm. And she used to play the Chuck Wagon Singers, the Impressions, uh, Charlie Pride, and Skeeter Davis. So you know that is more country. Mm. So that, that's it. And Jim Reeves. Jim Reeves. All right? Then no. Jim Reeves played every house. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, and, and Marty Robin. Uh. All right. Then no. My mother now take over. And it is Benny King, Ken Booth, 
Otis Redding, Aretha Franklin, and all of these songs. So on a Sunday, because remember, any of them days, you know, if you listen to radio, you know, it's a church, you know, boring as hell, you know. Great it's Christian true. hymns of our time. And, and, and them used to sing this thing at, at a particular time on a Sunday on RGR here. Far away on a hill stood that old rugged cross. With from Pat Boone. Pat Boone. Yeah. Oh, I cherish the old rugged cross. So radio, apart from in the afternoon, you would have a thing named, I think it named Sunday Serenade, mm -hmm. which was a which was a, 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 a paid 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 program from Byron Lee. Oh. But Byron Lee not playing a reggae. He only play Soka. Vic Taylor. No, uh, not even no, Soka. Soka. Not even Soka them time, the man. Vic, Vic Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> uh, uh, for the life of me, our empty chair by, by Keith Lynn and Elizabeth Serenade and all of them kind Elizabeth of. We can remember it's Sunday, you know. Right. So if you play soccer, soccer in the in the sixties and seventies on no. a Sunday. Uh, no man, no. you must want you want church come down for you. So oh, the church so, was still powerful. Yeah. So so even before I interact with all of these people in my home, it is peer music. Mm. Al Green, my mother used to love Al Green, you know, so it was a silver convention, but when you go down in the 70s now, you have silver convention with Sly, Fly Robin Fly, right. Sal Soul Orchestra, OJs, all of them stuff there. Yeah, so, man, the then, that <laughs> instrument. Yeah, you know, then yeah. now, Jimmy now, him was more roots, so he introduced me to Mystic Revelation of Rastafari, mm. whom I grew up with, Number Robinson, Number. Joe Ruglas. Uh, I was telling, uh, when I son him again, I, I, I can't remember him son, who count as his son, and I'm saying to him, you don't know how long I know you, you know, and you know me, you know, because I used to be I used to there at Rockford, because my father used to live at Rockford, okay. and he was among them, and he used to keep dances and have them as midnight attraction. Here's one. Uh, where it is? Uh, Mystic Revelation. Yeah, there. yeah, man. Oh, wait there. We can't no, find no, it again. No. Oh, sit here. With Tipa Tone. Musical disturbance. Kasi and the Mis Yeah, the and Tipa Tone with, with Big Youth. Big youth. Yeah. Is it? I was at that dance. <laughs> and that was... 72. 1972. Yeah, man. $1.50 plus good behavior. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so my father used to be the roots so Mystic Revelation. Uh, and, and him loved jazz. Mm. So I was introduced to Jimmy Smith. In fact, him loved jazz so much that him used to frame the Jimmy Smith albums and put it in him club. Oh, yeah, look, that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm really, really loved it. But everybody loved Jimmy Smith, you know. The organ, the, the, the B12, the B, the B, uh, B12, or B2 organ, the Amman organ. I'm not sure. That, that, that uh, is, is a part of reggae music in the early days. The oh, okay. Tuchuku, tuchuku, that, that type of okay. thing. Is, 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 People like Jackie Mitu and other Great, keyboard Mitu. players being influenced by, by, by Charles Erlan and Jimmy Smith, two jazz players. You know? Yeah, man. So Jimmy used to do the jazz. He used to do Yuma Sakela. The stylistics. One of, the, one of my most memorable times was one summer he was working in, in Montego Bay. And we had a little portable changer. Mm. In the place that we were staying in, and him have a set of music. So it was Yuma Sakela, Dennis Brown, the, the, the album No Man Is an no Island. Island, Soul Revolution was, was part of that, and Isaac Hayes, Hot Buttered Soul. I would have listened to all them songs. So it was a, I had a, a kind of wide appreciation for music from early on. That you know? realized, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we start by the time we, by the time we reach high school, we start playing Shanghai. So you start playing the father's song. Yeah, man, yeah. Ah. Yeah, man. So, so I've been playing music from, from your yeah, boy. Yeah, from my little youth. <laughs> yeah. So it's only it's only Shanghai you have, you have played on? Yeah. I don't need to play another song. <laughs> In fact, I became part of a part one of the sound. Okay. So that I would sense. want to be played on another song. Oh. And Shanghai has played with every sound that you can think of. Every sound. Stone Love, Metro Media, the whole of them. Yeah, man. Anybody have name in the business you also play Shanghai as well? Oh, 
Goofy was part of Mr. G was part of the crew. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Cutty Ranks. Obama. Yeah. Uh, Blacker. <laughs> Penny Irie. Penny. All of them. Yeah, Penny. I think Penny mentioned that. Yeah. Too, you know. All of them. Oh. Yeah, man. And, 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 and some of, oh, Supermark from, from, from who, became, who moved to, to Exodus and was working at, 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 at Asylum. Him is a, him is a, him is a, him is a alumni. A of yeah, man. Yeah. Holy. Man. And, and even some, I, I, I think, other selectors, but I can't remember their name right now. Because, you know, we get all and can't remember some I understand, man. Yeah, man. So after KC, you know, what did you do immediately after leaving KC? Well, after Camperdown. 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 All right. So, 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 all right. Here, your life is. Again and, and again it's just oh is when you have the right kind of people them around you like like my father. Mm. So my father was involved with the festival movement because of Tony Leng. So I grew up with Tony Leng, Raymond Sharp, all of these people, uh people like Arnold Bertram. Arnold Bertram. I used to I, yeah, yeah man, I used to I used to I used to be at all of the 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 the, the festival production from you know, you used to have the, the competitions, and them times they used to have it at War Theatre. Right. And I became part of the production crew because of Tony and my father. From early? Yeah, man. And festival song competition. For years, my father was one of the judges for, 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 the, for the competition. Festival. Yeah, so I'm, I'm used to hang out with people like Scratch, uh, not, uh, what's my name? Sangi Davis, Sangi. Ibo Cooper, all of them, man. There. Dean Fraser, who were part of the, the festival song thing. Uh, the first sound system organization, he was the, the chairman. And that was organized by JCDC, at, uh, uh, by Tony Leng. So there was a sound system yeah. organization yeah, in man. Jamaica. Yeah. Which, which, which time period we are We're talking about the 70s. 70s. And we used to, dur during, during the, the festival celebration on the float, right. I have photos of them. My father used to organize sound systems all around the city. So it starts from downtown, all around Eros Circle, straight up so to stadium. So go and so on, they are playing. The first big set, the first big play out for Stone Love was my father organized it. And he broke down. <laughs> yeah? It? Yeah. Them times it was a small sound. So when people don't believe that Stone Love is as old as he says, it is true. We can tell you that. My father can tell you that. You know? It's, it's, it, it, it is not... Uh, a, 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 a makeup situation right. from 70s, man. From in the 70s. Boat, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. We power come from 70s. 70s, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? But, so when him say it's 50 or whatever, they, right. they, and people say, no, nah, man, but I know what you feel. It's Stone Love Star. Long time they don't know there. what they're talking about. Uh, you know? History class. But they're not scared. <laughs> yeah, well, history class. Yeah. Yeah. So you say no, because that was involved yeah. in them things there. Uh, yeah, move. Deep and deeper. Oh Into yeah, so thing. so no. So the thing is now, I am at so and he was the first, uh, the, you know that Tony Lang is still a love fancy name, you know. So my father became the curator of Ronnie Williams Entertainment, Entertainment Center. Center. We build that. We lift cement and and, and build Ronnie that. Williams Entertainment yeah, Center. Yeah, with Charles Campbell. Up road. Yeah, with Charles Campbell who worked in the office of the Prime Minister. Yeah. So Jimmy became the curator, which is basically the, 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 the overseer. Overseer. <laughs> what Tony Leng are pretty the name, curator. so the curator. You know? So I am, we, a lot of functions, festival functions used to keep there. Them days there is only two sound systems you have, sound PA system you have in Jamaica. Two? Yeah. Audio Fun. Uh, audio? Audio Fun. Audio Fun. Paul Doyle. Paul, oh, yes. Yeah. And, and, and sound specialists. Sound specialists. So there were the two systems. So Doyle had the big, big uh, console. So one day we were up at that, Ronnie Williams, and I'm looking down at the equipment, and I said to my father, you know, say, I like this. I think I like this, you know, the sound thing, you know. It, it, it sound, I'm saying, yeah, yeah, you really like it? So all right. Them time there, Newton James was the director of radio at JBC, and not a brethren. <laughs> you see? So I'm saying, all right, I'll call Newton and say if he can line up on something. So I'm called Newton and Newton said, come up. I'm, in, I'm still in six form, you know. So I go up to JBC and Newton said, all right, you know what we're going to do? We're going to give you a summer job. 
And I got the summer job when I was in 6B. So the summer I was going back to, six, to six, 6A. Mm. So they, they put me in the library. They started in the library? Heaven, heaven. Because you know, I love the music. Right, sir. So I, so I go back up people like Owen Brown, Flo Very Wilson good, here, yeah. and, and those people, Marcia Livingston, Noreen Mullins, and all of these people in the, in the, the library. library. So I was supposed to be cataloging records and typing up Everywhere music sheets. Yeah, so the bug, you go into the studio, you see the music, the bug hit me. So I said to them, say, I tell my father, listen, I'm going to apply for a job right here, but I want to be a technical operator. Mm -hmm. And Tomlin Ellis at the time, I said to Tomlin, Tomlin, I think I'm going to apply for a job. And I said, what kind of job you want? I said, I want to be an operator. And he said, no, you're in sixth form. So don't apply for a technical operator alone. He said, but I don't want to tell me. And he said, all right, here we go. Here's the compromise. Apply for the technical operator stroke producer. Because you're a producer. As a sixth farmer, you, right. you're, you're on the trajectory to become a producer. Well, me never interested in a producer <laughs> at that time. That's a technical a aspect. straight music I want to play. Mm. You understand? Mm. So I applied, inter got interviewed by the great Wycliffe Bennett. I can't forget, he asked me a question. Ural Aldrich carried me over. I don't know if you know him, you're all yeah, the name. Yeah, he was one of the great announcers. And he was one of the supervisors. So he came over to Wycliffe. And Wycliffe said, what's the difference between uh, amplifier and something else? And you're all just say, well, an amplifier amplificates. <laughs> <laughs> and come up with something. <laughs> so think, Wycliffe asked me a couple more questions. I said, you're OK. You're hired. You yeah, know, by the way, young man, there's no such word as amplificate. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, Wycliffe became one of the one legend of, in the space. And one of my mentors. I have been so blessed to 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 in in that journey to be embraced by so many legendary people. We can't have start calling him. Mm. But Wycliffe was 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 the start of, of that. So that's how I got into radio. radio. That was your entry into radio. JBC Radio 1. And 2. And 2. Yeah, because those days, as a technical operator, you, you worked on Radio 1 and you work on Radio, radio 2, 2. On, a, on a shift basis. Okay. Yeah. So, so, and this now is still while you were going to see down. No, ma'am, I leave school down now. Yeah, I leave see down now. So, I, as a, as a, immediately as I left school, yeah, into, I, a job. into a job. I never stopped working then since then. <laughs> yeah. So, now you are. On radio, yeah, a player Shanghai, yeah, a god dance them, um, yeah, just living in music, yeah. Man. And so I remember one time, you know, I was playing on radio too, but on time they call it, they call it a training. Oh, okay. So Norman Marsh, I was him, apparently he was in somewhere else and listened to me play. So <laughs> him walking and stand up at the door and said, "Tell me something. You play a song?" I said, "Yeah." He said, "Oh." Because we are here, we can't understand how oh, the slicker youth are coming here so, and start playing. So. Play, you know? Uh. Oh, Sam so said, oh, no, no, we understand. Because, you know, we study the music. Because, I, you know what I used to do? I used to sit down in the sound room on, on Rosalind, where Shanghai was, and read every, every record. line of notes. So I can tell you who was the, who was the engineer for the OJs, you are all in this thing together, who was the producer who was the songwriter, and what year it was done, and who mastered it. I can tell you all of them things. I can tell you Joe Tarsia was the engineer. I can tell you probably say it was McFadden and Whitehead who did write the tune. I can tell you say it's Bonnie Sigler who did write the tune, or Dexter Wanzel, all of them stuff there. You got those things from, from information, from a line of notes. Just reading. Reading the line of notes, you see, and, look, and looking at the credits, because for whatever reason, I was always interested in those things. And then again, my mother, my mother used to carry on Jet Magazine, Black Star. They used to have a thing named Black Star. So, American base? Yeah, no, man, American, American base. Okay. Ebony, Jet, Ebony. Uh, you see, when your parents them encourage you and surround you with certain things. I was doing yoga in the 70s because my father was a practicing yogi back in them days. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I used to look at the stars because he had a telescope. And I look <laughs> on the stars. I used him, him was a technology freak. I am a photographer now because him was a photographer. And he used to take uh, photographs, which we have a bunch of them 
Him used to keep the dance them and them take photograph. Oh. Yeah. So must be a, a nice yeah. little library that man. Yeah, man. Yeah. So he was into the technology. My mother was into the reading and the culture, and she carried me go movies. I go every movie. I go, she carried me to every party. Carib. Yeah, man. Everywhere. Gaiety. We used yeah. to have Gaiety and Palace before we start go Carib. Carib. And state and regal. Mm. Then, then between her and and Jimmy, I used to go to every Christmas concert, and every concert that keep at regal, uh, Carib. So I saw Toots doing fifty four forty six. Fifty four forty six. Just after him come from number. prison. Yeah. At Carib, an amazing performance. Me see, me see, uh, Derek Harriet do. Salaman, Messi, Messi, uh, what his name again? Roy Shirley. I've uh, got on upon him knee and, and people put coat over him and all of them things there. Messi, all of them. All but, of them. Yeah, man. And then not only those, in the 70s, every, every a foreign, foreign uh, performer that come, I was there. Blue Magics, Marjorie Josephs, Jerry Butler. Tyrone Davis. Where were these people coming? Regal or Palette? Usually between either Regal or or or, or, Carib. or Carib. And and it depends. And the promoters would be like 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 Byron Lee uh -huh. or Horace Horace Forbes. You know they would they would do the the, the foreign ones then. Okay. But promoters for the the, the, the the regular shows was like Clancy Eccles, Clancy, Horace yeah, yes, Forbes, yes, yes, yes. and them man there. So I used to go all of them concerts there. But yeah, I've seen it all farther than this one. See, see Ken Booth in a jumpsuit and a wind up himself and girl I get crazy. <laughs> see, <laughs> see, see a, 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 a double bill of inner circle and third world. That me, was nice. Me see third world when there was a soul group. Soul group. Ibo had Afro, Richard Daly had Afro, nobody had, and Prilly Hamilton was the lead singer and Afro. he had an Afro too. And they was singing, they was doing songs like uh, they, they had have a BT Express they have a tune named Do It Till You're Satisfied. And them used to also play uh, Barry White Satin Soul with, with Ibo Cooper play it. As a soul group. And, and Ibo would play a, a, a blow Harmonic. train whistle. Train whistle. Ooh! <laughs> and, and, and see Jacob Miller within a circle. So it was, it was a kind of rich cultural kind of melting pot for me with, 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 with my mother. My father and everybody around me, them, they, I, I started to read early in terms of just casual reading, not just for book, right. not for schoolwork, school. because th these magazines were around. So read them, you know, and the good thing is that they were very black conscious. Mm. You understand? So I tell you what my mother used to read, Jet, Ebony, and Black Star. You understand? And so, yeah, then at one point, when we did young, I think my father was a dreadlocks rasta man. Yeah. Be, yeah, because of how he, how he used to carry himself, you know. And then the symbols. Back in them days, you know, every, every barbershop you go in, you know, you see a shot, you see a photo of Joe McKenyatta. You see one of Julius Nairi. You see Cassius Clay Muhammad or Mohammed Ali. Then you would see, uh, but the, the strange thing. You'd see JFK. A white man in the Yeah. At, Jamaica did us fascinated with, with, JFK. with JFK. So you would see him. And then of course the white Jesus. You know. Yeah. So but but the symbols that were around me. And then it it, 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 it it sounds unbelievable. But because I was living at Romlian, Kingston Technical is right beside me. I met Muta Baruka when he was a student and me I walked run up and down okay. in a Kingston Technical. KT. Muta is the same person. No, is it the same person you know? Or the same person when he was a student? Militant. I remember one day him fight off the entire... They were organizing some barbecue or something. And him, and them supposed to draw welcome on the blackboard. I don't know if Muta remember. And Muta decides to say red, green and gold. It's going on. <laughs> and the girls him say, no! You can't do that. And him said, no, I saw it for God. I don't remember how it was resolved, right. but I remember that. But guess what? Guess who, are you, who used to, to, to kind of mentor me as a little boy run up and down barefoot? Marcus Garvey's son, who taught at, 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 uh, at uh, Katie at the time. Oh, yeah? 
Yeah. And so he had an office right around to the, 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 the main entrance. And myself and, and, and a friend that I grew up with, Junior, who his father was a caretaker for Kingston Technical. We used to just hang out with him. And so you just listen to some of the stuff that he's imparting the to some of the students. The psyche from the beginning to... Thank God. Thank God. You know? See the prayer. Yeah, man. So, <laughs> you know, you listen, you listen 400 years. You listen... Doppy Conqueror, Conqueror, you listen to yeah. all of these things, you listen to, to Dennis Brown, you listen to Abyssinians and all that stuff. There, you know? So, but this, despite all that, you know, we're still influenced by the overseas. Naturally. Beatles and the, the Skeeter Davis. I'll tell you a story. I'm in South Carolina, driving down from North Carolina to go to Florida, and a bunch of us. So we stop in South Carolina and stop at some hick place. All right, the 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 the, the, the gas station pump them. Mm. It's like what you see in a movie. So we go into the I go into the store and they're playing country music. So unconsciously, it's Skeeter Davis sing. are playing. I mean, start singing. Sing. <laughs> so I mean, I saw someone go up to the, the cashier, and all of the white people them look on. So I said, wait, why not look on me so far? I never, I never bothered to deal with it. I just paid right, and move on. And when I drove off, when we drove off, I said, why the were they looking at me so strange? Because they wasn't looking at anybody else strange. Yeah. And a bunch of us in there were talking Jamaican. They obviously realized right. it. We're not, we're not American. North, North yeah, and then I said, what was I doing? And I said, oh, rotted. I was singing Skeeter Davis. Mm. And so they don't expect me to... Know that. S not necessarily because I they are they identifying me as a non American, you know, mm. because of the accent. So them, if even if even if an American black person would have known Skeeter Davis because it's South Carolina, should, but a Jamaican, and, and American, American, American should, should know it because the, the bunch of guys over there move with some entertainers. So you know them still. Pure nice and makeup, woolly right, right, right. pot, pot one or what have you, you know. So, you know. So we, we were in. We can't tell you about anything about Andy Williams. We can't tell you about Frank Sinatra. We know all right. Uh, people believe that I am just uh, knowledgeable in Jamaican, Jamaican music. music. Ask me anything about the Beatles. Yeah. Ask me anything about Pink Floyd. Ask me anything about Toto. Ask me anything about Ario Speedwagon. Ask me anything about rock and roll. Ask me anything about R and B and the development of R and B. Ask me anything about Chuck, 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 Chuck. When him? I couldn't uh, tell you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, not Chuck Jackson. Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry. Okay, I've been doing Chuck Berry. Yeah. <laughs> tell, ask me about Big Mama Thornton. Uh, ask me about the development of blues. Ask me about the development of funk. Ask me about the development of soul music. Ask me about Philadelphia. Ask me about Motown. I can't tell you the musician them. I can't tell you who comprise the Funk Brothers. I can't tell you about the, the different bands of Philadelphia, who play drum, Bobby Eli, all of them stuff there. When I introduce them, I introduce you as Jamaica, one of Jamaica's greatest repositories of mm. knowledge for, for, for music. But a world music, man. No, it's because it's a passion. I, I, was, I was schooled that way. And then make it worse. When I went to JDC, that education continues. Give you an example. I got introduced to folk rock music by a guy called Hope Howard. Mm. So he introduced me to Van Morrison, who became one of my favorite persons. He's the original writer for Crazy Love, and have I told you lately that I love you? And I'm a tune and Brown Eyed Girl, one of my all-time favorite. Him, him, him. I knew Richie Evans because Richie Evans did do a tune named Indian Rope Man, where Bob Marley do a van called African Herb Man. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you see? So, but if him start, me, me know more about, about, about Richie, Richie Evans, Arlo Guthrie, all of them people there, you know? So, so the folk thing, then now you have a man called Charles Lewin. Who opened us in terms of the, the, the rock kind of music. So he was the one who introduced Ario Speedwagon, the, 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 the Eagles, uh, Journey, all of these white bands, the, the, the little, little River Band, all of them things there. Uh, the, 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 the group named uh, Men Down Under, mm. Mark Nuffler, all of these guys 
we, we got exposed to, to them. Then, the ultimate was Dermotussi. Great Dermotussi. Dermotussi was my, one of my big mentors. You know, in fact, people say I sound like him on radio. Okay. So, I, I was fascinated one year, and I wasn't even in radio them time then. I heard him do a review of Journey in the Sea. No, the, no the, the, the album by Stevie Wonder. Uh, songs in the Key of Life. Mm, and his sorry. assessment and breakdown of the songs was an amazing thing. So, you know, so when we got here now, he introduced me to people like Gypsy Kings, uh, Public Enemy, and a bunch of a, a different <laughs> kind of music where, yeah. you know, so the, the, the education is always going and going and going and going. And, 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 it, and, and a bunch of people is responsible for it. It's not me just on my own. You acquire, know, all acquire all of the knowledge. People influence you, but you take the, the initiative to do, do some more work. It's not and, just and the think. acquisition of the knowledge in a father, then it's mm. the retention. It's yeah. amazing. Mm. Your ability to call on a name and a date and a yeah. time and a place. Yeah. It's amazing, man. Uh, you be, Are you head not big like to me? You know, <laughs> you know the thing is, you know, it's, it's when, it's, it, let me tell you, say, if you do what you love, you know. You never work a day in your never life. Never do work a day, Why? you know. And, and, and the thing that is, that you see? <laughs> don't forget, trust me, I forget sometimes, you know, because it's a bunch of stuff. It's a bunch yeah. of stuff and, too. And, and, I, and, I, I, and I'm not afraid to admit that yeah. I don't remember. Here am I trying to, 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 to get a hold on Jamaica's music. Yeah. It's one of a hold on world music. Yeah, man. One, of my, one, of, my one of my favorite rock band is The Doors. The Doors. So I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm at a conference, an international conference, and this, this scholar is from Australia. So they're talking in about rock music, and I say, yo, is he talking about The Doors? So I say, yo, that's one of my favorite groups. And she said, no, you, you're from Jamaica. I say, oh, yeah, that I say, Crystal Ship, uh, Love Me Two Times. You're running knowledge from Yeah, them. man. Um, uh, I, I can't, can't remember some of them right yeah. now. I'm mean, gonna listen to the song them, and I tell her, I say, "Yo, the Lizard King, I'm a boy." <laughs> yeah. You know? So I say, "Wow, Dennis, didn't know different level of connection mm -hmm. right there." Right. That's yeah, so and yeah. Eventually, now you started taking academics as it relates to your involvement in in radio. Mm -hmm. You did, uh, I think, Mascom yeah. first. Yeah. You wait. Yeah. But which year them time now? Uh, 1983. 1983. Yeah. <laughs> so I did, I did three years at, at, at JBC uh, as an operator and then decided, all right, time to go back to school. And so I did the, 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 what we call a postgraduate diploma in advanced right. reader oh. journalism. Oh, so the diploma yeah. is in yeah. advanced reader, reader journalism. journalism. Yeah. And that was at UA? Yeah. All of my degrees are right, from you. Right, right, yeah. true. Mr. said that's yeah. true. Yeah. And then you did... Um, I don't the, the, the first degree, the BA. The BA, Communication yeah. Studies. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and the television. Oh. For that. Television production. Okay. Oh, but yeah. never know you do that. No, man. I'm, but I'm a director, television yeah, producer. That, that was the name yeah, man. of the course of the study. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's called... It's called... Uh, media, I did, I did, well, you know, I'm a politician and social scientist, so I did, I did, I did major in, in media and did a minor in social science. Oh, okay. So I did economics, okay. sociology, politics, government, mm -hmm. all of them, public administration and all them stuff here. You see, a lot of people believe you know, because you are known for one thing. That you don't know anything else. <laughs> yeah. Because you're known for one, one thing, thing yeah. you don't know anything yeah, thing else. else. Yeah. Mm. You know, so, That's so, so yeah, true. yeah. So when 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 you can articulate about economics and talk about all kind of different theories and all kind of history, or you can talk about sociology and talk about the, the theories of sociology. Mm. Uh, apparently, you're not supposed to know these things because you never go to school. You see? <laughs> yeah. Then you did your doctorate yeah. in cultural studies and yeah. ethnomusicology. Yeah. So I did it in cultural studies and, and ethnomusicology. So it started out as a cultural studies degree. But cultural studies is interdisciplinary. Mm. So you can do a cultural studies degree and basically an economics you do. Okay. Yes, okay that makes sense. Or you can do cultural studies and you, you end up developing political scientist skills. Mm. So for me now, it is 
it is, it is almost like a triple threat because it's a good foundation in cultural studies, which right. I think is one of the most important things going forward for the rest of the world, and especially Jamaica. And then mm. I did ethnomusicology because I, my focus was on music, music and the culture of music. But also, I did a lot of management ah. research and studies. So I, I, I look at the economics of the music industry. Okay. So in terms of management and organizational structure and entrepreneurial pursuits, so I, I now teach entrepreneurship. I teach in, I've taught in MBA programs. I've done marketing and all of these stuff. So Separate and apart from the music thing when you teach. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Mm. So it, so it, it, that, it went, but that's how you have to do it. You, know? you, you, have to, you have to basically, if you're, if you're doing advanced studies, right. in a, nowadays, you have to be flexible and it has to be practical so that you can utilize it in true. all kind of different ways uh, it's it's no it's no it's no accident that i was a general manager at rgr gleaner group mm. can we ever talk about that you know it's not, it's not an accident you became <laughs> enemy of state number one oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> we'll get around to that what was it what your thesis what was it based on for your phd all right so it is called it was entitled if i can remember it uh, popular music production in Jamaica. If you got something this way. Yeah, and it's called dis it dis dysfunction uh, creative genius dysfunctional institutional framework. Okay. So basically, what we are say is that what we are say is that the the it the 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 creativity is at a high level. But in terms of the organization structure, the law, the business, the management of it, it dysfunctional. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you know. I would love to read that. Uh, well, the, the book is there. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, in the book. Yeah, it's in the book. Oh, okay, okay. The book, the book, oh, the, book, the, book the Creative book. Echo Chamber is yes. actually oh, the from creative. the dissertation. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Somewhere along that line, and when you went back into radio, when? Uh, all right. So, RFM. No, all right. So here, here you go now. After I went to, I did, I did a year at a postgraduate diploma and then three years of the BA. Okay. Immediately after I left UWE, I went to work as an audiovisual trainer for a development agency called Social Action Centre. So I taught in Jamaica. Yeah. So I start teach people how to use video and do video production. Mm. It's a long time here teach, you know. <laughs> From Malib University, I've been teaching. So I and 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 so. It, 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 while I was at Social Action Center, I used to teach a lot of community people video production. All of them, oh, them, all of them end up, yeah, <laughs> all of them end up being correspondents. Camera, oh, oh, for, 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 for RGR and JBC and, and, and not, for TVG and CVM. Okay. Yeah, so one of the guys that I trained was in Trelawney, one was in Westmoreland, Alan. And all of them became, became correspondents. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then one of the first, Talawa Levy, that was his first foray into video production because his father was the, 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 the general manager for Social Action Center. Oh, okay. So he came along and would teach him some of the, 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 the basics you know, of, of video production. Mm -hmm. So after I leave uh, Social Action depth. Center, where did I go? Oh, I went back to JBC. You went back to JBC? Yeah, but in television now. Oh. So I never got radio first. I went back as a television producer. Okay. Working on program, the program, magazine man, program. Manta? No, man. That's man, a long Manta after. No, scene. No. Scene. So you have a magazine program named Scene. I know about Scene. Yeah, man. so them days, it was, it was, it, it was Dan Buckner who was the, the, the man in charge of television. So I used to do, if you know me, anything we do have to do with music, so at one point, Dan, Dan, Dan Buckner said to me, all you want to tell me about is bunny rugs. <laughs> <laughs> so what he used to do, which, is, which was good, yeah. he started to direct me now to do other features. So he started to send me to do uh, art exhibitions mm. and them sort of stuff there, which was very good. Because if you're going to do an art exhibition, you have to have the vocabulary. 
You can't just write and say, right. oh, so the learn. picture look good. <laughs> so, so you have to yeah, learn so it. it. Yeah, you have to develop the vocabulary. So what he did for me was to expand me and move me away from bunny rugs, as he <laughs> called it. But the good thing is, the only feature that was done on Steely and Cleavy before them bust big and them demonstrating. You did that? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Really? Yeah, man. And I had one where I had Dennis Brown, Maxi Priest, Junior Reed, and Barry Saman singing in the studio. One time. One time. Check YouTube, you'll see it. It's As called it, Reggae, you, reggae, it's, reggae it's on is a Rising. Page, one page or, or just all over the place? No, man, it's on my, it's on my page. What yeah. is the name of your page? Uh, that, that, that page is called E. Kerr Gibb. E. Kerr Gibb. Yeah. Just, look, just put Street in Reggae is Riding. Reggae is Riding. Yeah, reggae is Rising. Oh. Or, or tribute to Steely and Cleavy. Come in if we learn these things, you know? Yeah, As yeah. We, we had to seek the knowledge of the music yeah, and kind of things. Yeah. So, uh, important things and for Cool, man. Mm. So, eventually now, you started. You started producing first, or you started managing first, no, or you so, started being all right, a so, All right, first. here you go now. <laughs> all right, so as I'm at scene. I'm at TVJ mm -hmm. doing scene. Did the first documentary on, on Carnival, Jamaica Carnival and Trinidad Carnival. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah, them <laughs> things that we used to do, you see? And did a bunch of stuff in terms of Sailor James, Black yeah, heroes in the Hall of Fame, the Philharmonic, reggae Philharmonic. We do all of them, all of them documentaries and stuff. That's some holy for good work. Them yeah, fire. man. Did the first feature on on Black History Month? Dennis Howard. First, first, first feature. Nobody knew about Black History Month, and I did the first feature. The ironic thing, I went to the USIS to interview, and guess who? Is a white man named Rasby Rasby Gore Bazala was the key key key. Key interview. Never knew much about black history, history mm -hmm. but we never had no choice. Oh. And so I, I live to see that after that, Black History Month was celebrated as if it was one of us, our, our thing. So I was, because of the foundation of black consciousness, I was amongst people who, who project that, like Wycliffe Bennett. E.T., Errol Thompson, yeah, Errol Thompson, all them people there. Then Free Eye come on again, yeah, and right. all them man that influence you, so you have a consciousness. Dermotussy, all of them. So all of the stuff that I did had to have some kind of meaning in terms of educating people. So yes. there was, a, there was a, a musical called Black Heroes in the Hall of Fame. A guy named Flip Wilson, I think him the name, and he brought it down to Ward Theatre, and we did the documentary. Peter, Michael Riley. Uh, he's now a professor at, I think, Westminster University. But he was the leader of, of that group. When them come down, I'm going to sort them out and do a documentary on them. Them saw that stuff there and did a bunch of uh, art, art and plays and them yeah, stuff well, there. Let me ask you a question. These documentaries are in the, in the archives. archives of... Yeah, hopefully. So you don't have no copy of these things? I have just a few. Just a few. Yeah, the first one I did was a tribute to one of my great mentors, Alma Makian. Uh, she taught me radio at UWE. The reason why I asked was, yeah. these are things that I would love to I have sit some down of them. and I, watch. No, I have some of them. I can, I can I would appreciate that, show you them. I would appreciate yeah, that. Man. As we said, we're seeking. Yeah. We're seeking. I, did a, I, did a, a, I think I, I, even though I, I'm a proud of that docu feature on, 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 on Gonzalez, Christopher Gonzalez, oh, yeah? one of his exhibitions. You know, I think I have that too. So it, it was a, a wicked experience. So after that now, I, after, what well, 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 me do? Oh, I started to work in radio again while I was at television. So I started See, to I, work on Radio 2. Radio 2 now. And okay. now I had my own show. Before I even go to, while well, I was at, 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 before I even got to UA you now, I used to have my own show. I show him on stage. <laughs> where I played, I played live performance on a Sunday. Oh. Yeah. So I was always... On stage. I, I always... Listen, you, me as an operator, but me I tell them how to program the station. I used to take initiative and set up time signals for Radio 2. And it was just in my head them time there. So we, when, you, when you do... All of this prepared me, you know, for all of the different management jobs that, that I, you have taken take, on. I took on in radio and, uh, and anywhere else, even my own business. So it, the point is, you, nobody enough to tell you to do it. You can just do it. Some used to go to Bobby Gisays and say, this is what the program is supposed to sound like, you know, what you think? And I used to take the initiative and call Charles Lewin and say, Charles Lewin, 
Radio 2 don't have time signal, you know. We just have play music and nobody don't know what the time. That don't make no sense. And then Charlie said, come on. Because one thing I must tell you, JBC was one of the greatest experiences of my life because they, 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 they encourage you. Mm. Everybody encourage you. I, I just said on Facebook to one of, and, and we never used to work together in terms, I used to work at radio and I used to work in TV. But they used to embrace you and I have to say to him, say, yo, thanks for the love and respect we had to show us. It's not now like nowadays, everybody just hate everybody and it's bitter. P people just used to embrace you and say, come in my youth. Nurture you know? your creativity. Nurture you and, 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 and you know, encourage you to, 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 to go forward. So, as I say, when I, when, I, when, I, when, when I said to Charlie, Charles Lewin, I need to do some time signal. I said, yeah, man, come. I'm going to the studio. And if I, I may, you might not remember, it, Charles used to come in and say, JBC FM time, 2 o'clock. JBC FM time, 2.30. Okay. And so me do that for my own and just put it on and everybody start to use it. So you start to use initiative and say, listen, this is how we can change up the program and this is what we can do, blah, blah, blah. And nobody never tell you, say, yo, just sit down, man. You hear that? Right. They might not they might not have adopted it. Right. But them say, oh not too bad. Then yeah. Keep on keep it up. You know? So I I started to work in radio and I used to do a show named Sound Beat in the Mix. Sound beat in, in the mix. You know? And after that, I think, where did I did I No, after that now, I start I was still producing. And after I did the Steely and Cleavey documentary, right. Cleveland Brown in the mixing lab said to me. Tell me something. He's an announcer. I said, no. I said, which announcer? I don't want to be a radio announcer. I'm a producer. I said, you should have up on radio, you know. And I said, I said oh, yeah, forget that. I don't know radio thing. No, radio and on air thing. Mm. So I said, him talk to me some more. We are talking. I said, yo, you sure you're not an announcer? You have the radio announcer voice, you know. So I said, yo, I'm going to tell you something, you know. Big secret. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> a radio station, I'm going to start, you know. Um, yeah, so I'm saying. And Cleavy was the one who you Cle had that conversation yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. Them time there, I don't even know that my good friend Clyde McKenzie, who we used to work with at JBC. Clyde was at JBC too? Yeah, that's where I'm start reading artists. Me never know that. Yeah, man, reading artists. Him and Bob Clark. Clyde one of them times. Him and Bob Clark. You know, with the whole shocking vibes. Yeah, and yeah. All of them. So, but me never know say, yeah, Clyde man. Was, was, was doing that. Yeah. Because JBC had some regional station, Radio Northeast, Radio Central, and Radio West. Didn't know that. Yeah. That became Hot 102. Radio Central became KLAS. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Radio, and Radio Northeast became IRFM. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, when, 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 because that's, those are the licenses that, that were issued. That were issued. And we and, and they shut down Radio Northeast, Radio Central, and Radio West. You see? So, Cleve <laughs> said, Hey, where the man? Carl Lloyd Stanbury, man, our manager. We think if they're on radio. I said, yeah, But I'm doing radio already, you know. But I don't want to be a radio announcer. So I said, No, call him, man. So I call. I said, All right, uh, can check it out. But I have no intention of being a radio announcer. <laughs> so I call Stanbury and say, Yo! Available, you know, if you want a producer, because them don't even know say that you need radio producers. They are focusing on just radio announcers. So I must say, well, right now we don't really want a producer, you know, but we, we, we're looking for on your personalities. So what do you think? You don't, you don't want to do it? They said, no. Production, we want the man. I say, yeah, what you do, man? Do a demo. And when you do the demo, we can have a discussion. Take long for the demo, come and I want to do it. You know, so I finally did the demo, I'm checking, I said, yo, you know, did the demo yet? I said, all right, yeah, man, I'm going to do it. I'm one day, I'm going to JVC studio and do the demo. <laughs> as I send it to him, as I drop it off, him call me, I say, yo, when you can start? <laughs> yeah. So I said, yo, what do you mean, what kind of when we can start? May I get the producer job? He said, no, we don't really want a producer, no, no, you know, sir. but we need you as an announcer. We need somebody for the uh, thing that's lot. And plus, we need somebody who have programming skills and, and experience. So then me and Clyde had a conversation. He was a general manager. So I said, listen, you have to come in as a deputy programs manager. You know, Bob Clark was the, the programs manager. Mm. So we come down, sign contract, and go down. At one point, uh, 
I was doing so well because I was a freelancer and I was working with, with Adrian Robinson. I was working with Macintosh, uh, uh, what do you call it? Mattress company because I me, me developed develop my entrepreneurial skills them time you know. Because yeah. I form a company already, you know. Because the, the, the arrangement with me Save and IRFM. No, man. Oh, that, yeah. was, that was Jamento Productions. Jamento, okay. So I formed a company in 1989. <laughs> All right? <laughs> you see? And start to work as a publicist. Uh -huh. The first publicist. Because, uh, you know, I become a publicist. No. I became a publicist because I was not going to... I, I saw the, a, a gap. There, there has been that. There was a gap. Nobody was... People believed in Piola. And I'm saying to them... You can't do, you can't get promotion, you can't get earplay without Piola. Right. So I said, all right, that is the gap. When I used to tell big artists that I want to write a, a bio or a biography for you, they asked me one name, so. Literally. <laughs> Literally. And so I used to, so I had clients like Morgan Heritage, Tom I had Brown. clients like uh, Lasana Bandeli, which was one of my first client. Then I had people like a Mixing Lab. Then I had Tapazuki and a bunch of others, and it just grow and grow and grow. Grow, grow. So, I did start that, but Stanbury come come railroad my career. What do you mean? And, and, and I met me go to Irish Oh, okay, okay, so, okay. After, after the first week, I become the general, the, the, the programs manager. And them switch Bob to marketing. Oh. So, a, apart from me being the assistant, because of the, 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 the way me had. Because I was, uh, was supposed to be like an RGR, you know. It wasn't supposed to be That's a music-oriented right. thing, you know. Oh, really? No. It was supposed to be talk show and all them things there. And it was going to be strictly reggae. And I said, not going to happen. We are not going to be competitive if we do what RGR is doing. We have to come clean, straight music. And... and, 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 and uh, come with a more Jamaican kind of vibe. Me and Clyde sit down and talk them things here. So by the time he come in, all the plans. You know we're supposed to be the talk show host? Winston Witter, Baba Tunde. Baba Tunde. Yeah. <laughs> you see? Yeah. So, yeah. so that, all them plans are scrap. No reggae was supposed No dance hall wasn't supposed to play. I mean, sis, that dance hall play. Oh, so yeah. when me all idiot to talk about how me a fight against dance hall, they don't know what they speak of. If it wasn't for me and Irie FM, dancehall would not have reached to the levels that it had reached in the 90s. Absolutely, because by, before that, before Irie FM, dancehall has struggled in terms of getting Radio the kind of earplay and getting the kind of respect that it, it got. I insisted and said, no, dancehall have to play. Carl Young, them time, then I believe in a, in a, and because Carl Young was more a reggae, he had him reggae band and him mm. into the tourism thing. He must say, no, sir. No, answer. Yo, one of the directors, they must say, no, I'm going to play some soca, man. Soca for play. <laughs> I will say, yo, you mad? It can't work. Yeah. RFM started out being 70% reggae and 30% foreign music. And when it was, when, we, when, when the team was going to advertisers and, and potential people, it never, it wasn't flying. And Clyde just one day just decided to say, the next meeting we'll go, him tell him say 100%. And when him tell him 100%, everybody fly. So when him tell him, say, so them say, who are the announcers on the thing? And him start calling some no name people when nobody know because them knew. Right. You see, from I went on board and him said, then he said, what? Oh, everybody said, oh, all right. But here's the irony. I started to go to people. I can't call them name because it would be shocking. Mm. I went to several outfits and individuals and say, people, your chance to become a star is now. There's going to be a reggae station that is going to play 100% reggae. Give me your catalog. None of them give me nothing. Some of them say, reggae? All day? That I go feel. That I go boring. I want to give a, 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 a conversation. I'm still at JVC. And I won't call the, the player's name because it's pure big radio announcers and everybody that you know. And all of them. <laughs> so about three of them. So one of them said, hey, hey, 
Me hear one little thing I say, they must start one reggae station. I watch you, you know. One of the big, big DJ them say, that a foolishness. That a go boring. Reggae all the way, all day. And the other one say, yeah, man, that a, that a foolishness. That not going to work. So, me know me, I go, you know, hear me now, no? So, well, it, it might work. Get a chance, no? <laughs> <laughs> them know, no, I'm going, you know. That was the, that, so people know I talk about reggae and how reggae this. In 1990, nobody believed in IRA FM. None. Not even the DJ them. Not even the, 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 the entertainers. I, if I call the names of who people tell me and ask Lloyd Stanbury and ask, call, uh, call, ask Clyde. Like, Clyde. Because they had, they too had their experience where people them tell them, say, what? That not, that's a foolishness. That's a good feel. You hear me? That was, that was the situation. So we start at IRA FM. <laughs> in, in three months, we were the number one. The rest is history. The rest is history. My afternoon show beat Barry G, beat Winston William. So it was the thing that three KC man in the afternoon. I, I would just, I talk it out. We just, yeah, we just kick with them foot. Kick with them foot, you know. And I'm a two good friend them still, you know, because I used to work with Barry G at JBC. Mm. The two, the first, the two, the two David Radagan clash. Is me I work as a, as an engineer. Oh yes. Yeah man. The first one was me. Michael Chambers and Bonnie Spence. Okay. And the second one, it was me alone. Yeah. The second clash, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. So, I, I pay history, man. Be realized. Rather got, rather got my bridging until this day, you know. Oh, if it's a few so the thing is now, I remember <laughs> a, 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 there's a, a famous photo of me and Barry while that clash, and Barry is looking at me putting on a record. Radigan draw some tune with Barry G, scratch, start scratching my head. Then turn Barry, Barry G under pressure, you know, Barry do something. He's got the yeah. head. Yeah. So Radigan draw a dub. And Barry G don't know what to do. But again, because I'm inquisitive and always searching. So I, me and Barry G had a different kind of relationship. Oh, okay. I could have gone in and I could have taken out him records. I could have done certain things. Mm. When anybody want anything from Barry, them say, Dennis, go talk to him. You <laughs> see? <laughs> So, uh, I used to look through him records. Uh, so, I remember that there was a Scientist Dub album that was produced by Hawkeye. You see? And when D David Radigan drew the dub from Barry, Barry didn't know for the third fool. So, I said, No, Barry. Yeah, have something. We'll have something. Hold on there. <laughs> and we just run, go for it. <laughs> I, and run, come on. And as we put it on, so the photographer take me. Uh, I put it on, <laughs> you know, to answer him. Because Barry, the first clash, Barry never prepared. None of us was prepared for Radigan. Yeah. We never expect Radigan for go on so wicked, man. <laughs> I am introduced to all Maxi Priest. No, the thing that they do, Maxi Priest before. I think Dermot said they play Maxi Priest. But uh, the, the first, caution, caution. Caution. Say you got to have caution. I, I, I David Radigan, that man. Not even Anna Dermot. David Radigan, I could know Maxi Priest. We never prepare for Radigan. We never know Maxi yeah, Priest. We never know Maxi Priest. The man said, This is Jacob Miller's cousin. Maxwell Elliott, also known as Maxi Priest. We said, Jesus Christ. And what is. And then, yeah. Caution. Say you got to have caution. Chillaman, 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 chillaman. We said, Jesus Christ, Maria. What is. <laughs> I yeah. tell you, man. Yeah. So Radigan won the first clash? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that other one was a draw. Was a draw. <laughs> yeah. But Radigan, listen, let me tell you, Radigan make Barry G start playing more reggae music. Before that, we used to fight with Barry for playing reggae music. David Radigan yeah. was a person who made Barry Gordon start playing more, play reggae, more music. reggae music. Yeah. Before that, that is... Before that, that is... Before that, before that is... is before, I was there. No, I'm not asking you. Yes, that, that is a profound yeah, man. statement. That is a... Yeah, man. He'll admit it. Yeah, man. You see, we, we, me and the two reggae man them at the time was me and Bonnie Spencer at RGR. You mm. had a reggae man before us. Right. Like, like a guy named Abrams and a couple other people. But the, the current at that time, in the 80s, we were the that person who carried. was pushing reggae. Bonnie used to do a lot of stuff with, with him, used to be friends with John Jalaz. So I used to come with the first time here, I went I do them, I them, them, them. them, them. Yeah. Say, so, you know, it's a virgin girl. I said, wait, that can't play for radio. 
<laughs> you see? Because yeah. of the virgin girl thing. I'm the first person to play half pint because half pint wins some and them tune there was my cousin John Marshall who produced them. Oh. So I gave them to me. Okay. I'm the first man to play foreign mine because me and Sugar Minot and a guy named Nabi Dread who were, 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 were good friends. Uh. So them, 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 them bring foreign mine to me first. You hear the story? Yeah? Foreign men are going, you know. And we, only me and Bonnie Spencer play it, you know. And we have begged Barry G to play the tune, you know. We said, Barry, if you play the tune, you know, it it'll go, it go, it busts, you know. Okay. But if Barry G had the icing on the cake, Barry G, you now listen to it. When, <laughs> so, him used to have a way, when he was in the studio, you know, after the show done, the, the, the most meticulous organized DJ. Barry G. Him success, you know, by accident. Mm -hmm. Him is the only DJ. You know, the history of Jamaican broadcasting that had one point something million people are listening to him in you know, the 1980s. That can't happen again and will never happen. One million persons are listening to him on a daily basis for him, for him afternoon show. Mm. So he used, used to do some. It, Barry used to write down everything we're going to say. If he go to the road and he made a phrase where he like, he write it down. He had a big book. And so it was organized and so after him showed them, he used to stay back in the studio and produce stuff and write stuff. So he used to, we used to have a way so that we can pipe the music into the studio while we're still on here. Oh, okay. But only the DJ can only hear in the it. Studio. Mm. So I try to convince him for, for make him realize the foreign man are one of the baddest students. You know? So while he's in there, I write up him stuff, you know. A peer foreign man may I play, you know. <laughs> worry them, worry them, worry them, worry them, foreign man. Barjina a pay me mine. Yeah. yeah, ignore me. <laughs> so long after, after the tune bust and big now. Here, Barry. This is the baddest tune on the planet. Blah, blah, blah. Mr. Barry, too late, man. <laughs> Forget you with that tune. We tune bust the tune Barry. already. No bother with it. Me and Bonnie, Bonnie Spence. You know. So, um, back to IRFM. FM. Mm. Bad boys. Oh, let me tell you something. You know we, where we got music from? We got music from Dr. Dredd. We got music from Chris Blackwell, Ireland. And then me had to carry my own records. Don't I? Yeah, because first of all, I never have a dancehall tune. So them days, eh, me have one big box of record. What me I do? You see the juggling thing? Right. Who start that? Who start that? Tell and me. And me. Yeah. Juggling. We used to call it rhythm sweep. Rhythm sweep. Yeah, for radio. Who start make DJs come work on radio? Me. Me when me did JBC, McDraw from Ma Marlon Young used to play on a on a on a on a sound name, Heatwave. Heatwave. At at uh Skateland. Not Bob not Barry G, not 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 uh Bo Bobby Digital Heatwave, you know. There was oh, two Heatwave. The heat wave that mind there was a the soul Heatwave. Oh, that 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 snakey who is an engineer right now, and I, him, him gone back to DJing. Him, he, he used to play on that sound, so I used to carry Marlon and Snakey and carry them over to Radio Two when I used to do sound beat, and put them in the studio and make them play. Play. Never Ray who used to be pleasure maker. He used to have a sound name pleasure maker. He used to carry me and I make him come play. Michael Barnett. We used to carry Michael Barnett in a radio too and make him come play him tune them before him come from radio. Oh yeah. A radio to him start. You understand? It's a bunch of people we give break and put them and put them and put them on the map. And we can call many more names. Many, many more. You see? So basically that in terms of the 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 the, the, the IRFM situation, mm -hmm. we 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 start the rhythm sweep. We start talk about producers. Nobody never know no, 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 who's not producer. Nobody never know no engineer. I go to Dave Kelly and say, Dave Kelly, I go turn you in a star. Now I make start talk to you as an engineer. I'm never a producer in time then. I will start tell uh, Sil, 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 Garden. Sil Garden. Sil Block. Sil Block. Before them a producer, I turn them in a star. People start know them because I talk about them as engineers. Nobody used to talk about labels. Nobody used to talk about producers. Nobody never used to talk about songwriters. I made Michael Bennett one of the premier men in the music just by fo focusing on his... Them time they didn't even have Grafton yet. I focused on him as a songwriter. Oh, yeah? Yeah. 
He never have graft on it. He must have a, 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 a label named Two Friends. Two Friends. Him, him and a guy named Shadow. And them call it oh, Two, two friends. friends. I will start talking about how Michael Bennett is one of the great songwriters. We used to talk about Carlton Hines as a songwriter. And start shift the thing from just the music. Mm. All of that was done on Irie. All of this about rhythm sweep or we juggle rhythm on a consistent basis at this it start. You understand? Bring back a whole heap of the old artists, them. Burning Spear got life in a circle. We used to play bad boys before it even start go up on the cops thing. Because those were the songs that we were, were we got. Because the Jamaican fraternity nah, never no, believe no, no. in a way. Never believe in a way. I got to distributors and say, yo, give me on the tune them. Man, them say, yo, that a no. joke. Oh, yeah? Yeah, man. RFM. RFM. Reggae Radio. Reggae Radio. <laughs> the number one station. Yeah. See, it surprised everybody. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and as I tell you, there was no dance hall there. I had to carry dance hall music. Them time there, it was like, you know, the, the, tum 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 uh, uh, what name? Nin ninja, Ninja Kid or something. Ninja, I uh, the name again. Uh, what is, what is, what is, what is, the, the, the movie with the Turk of them? Ninja Turtle. Ninja Turtle. You remember the rhythm there? Yeah. Those were the rhythms that were out at the time. And then th th things like, I think, like when they did do, Jamis did do a new set of, 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 of the, the Punani rhythm. Punani. Oh, okay. And them, and them things that we did have. And, and Bobby Digital now, me start work with Bobby Digital from their radio too. Oh, okay. And I play songs like Just Reality and stuff. So I start giving me tune. Mm -hmm. So we used to do now, what we used to do now is that we have to play the tune them first. My show. So we used to have uh, used here. That was another Irie FM exclusive. I made it, made it voice that. And we used to play the tune them before everybody. My boss went before it even mix. Tiger. Yeah. We go, we go to the studio, and, and Steely said to me, say, yo, we have a Tiger tune here, we're bad enough. And me hear it, and I said, put it on a cassette. And Steely said, no, it no mix, Dennis. It no mix. Them time they do it, my band, the keyboard phrase. And I said, Steely, you if you not give me that tune there right now, don't play with me. Give me the tune. I'm going to play it on it, boss. After it, boss. Yeah, then mix it. it up. Yeah, we hear it. Doop, doop. Doop, That never depends on it when I boss it. I always see those boss a bunch of tune. You see? Boss, bring the amount of artists who were break out at that time. In the two years that I was there, Cutty Ranks, Garnet Silk. Me hear people that take credit for Garnet Silk. Uh -uh. Ari, Dennis. I listen, you know the story with it I steal it of Garnet Silk and I suffer him. Steal it? Yeah. I even call him Garnet Silk. From but you know the process. Yeah, yeah. You know the process. You know, Your artist the time not come yes. yet. <laughs> so me me introduce Courtney Cole to Cutty Ranks and Tony Rebel. Them come down for do a show for me at Acropolis. And so me used to line up Courtney Cole. Mm. And tell Courtney Cole, say, yo, I'm going to line up with Cutty Ranks and, and things there. Because I'm me boss Cutty Ranks. So we, 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 we line him up. So when him come down for the show, before them do the show at Acropolis, them do a tune. So Tony Rebel and, and things they have a tune together. The, probably the only tune that them have together. Cutty Ranks and, and Tony, Tony Rebel. Rebel. Yeah. It's for Co it's Courtney Cole. Courtney. So because that relationship... When we invite Courtney, yeah. when him come down, yeah. when I'm a, I'm a rebel or something Yeah, together. man, them do something. The first one was one together. Mm -hmm. So the thing is now, because, because, because now Courtney. Rebel and, and Silk are link. Right. Christian soldiers. Yeah. Rebel tell him, say, yo, my producer, I don't want to watch you there, you know, a good boy, you know. So them link up, and Courtney Cole come to me and say, yo, ah... Uh, Remember them introduced me to a guy named Garnet Silk, you know. I don't know him, you know. I don't know him. So I said, what do you think? I said, yeah, man, make him come, man. <laughs> I don't know him, you know, but, just, yeah. but you know, you're not going to say no. no right. So make him come. And they, and him and Yasser Safari come. And them going to the studio and do, I can see clearly I can now. See clearly now. And that bus Garnet Silk. Because as him, as him, as him, as him, as him, as him, as thing as thing that mix it, him go run a dub and give me it and me play it. And then now everybody has said, wait, I got to say that? Then him do, 
seven Spanish angels, and the rest is history. Bobby, Di Bobby Digital called me and said, F -f -f Father, I have a tune with garnet silk. You have yeah, come feet, it's growing. It's growing. And I saw the thing start. Yeah? Yeah. Then jammies do. Them belly full, but them starving. I was there when that was, 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 was yeah. when the harmonies was put in, was being done by Jennifer Lara. Fill us up with your mercy. Yeah. And I, yeah, and I said, start. I put, put Scarlet Silk on the first show by himself. A shock attack show I did do in a 1983. Yeah. Yeah. Five thousand dollars me give him. Five thousand dollars. I'm telling you, five thousand dollars enough nice money. I still have the contract. Still have a contract. Yeah, man. And and the first I'm big money I'm ever get. Yeah. The first big money. When I give it, when I give it before. You sure? Me hear me say yo, see your money, and him say father, you you serious? Me say no, man. You you no no turn everybody now call you on. Yeah, you go go on by say. yourself. And him done the show. But after the show, he carry him family, lovey, him mother, sister everybody and sister, everybody. Mm. Come say, yo, are the money, you know? Mm. See my family, yeah? Yeah, man. <laughs> 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 you also worked on Kayleigh's one of them times? Yeah. Um, after where? So where was it? Oh, oh, I left Irie FM under controversial uh, circumstances. circumstances. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, I go to one show. Uh, I did Sting. I emceed Sting and then I was going to do. Did you hear that? Uh, 1992. 92 Sting. Yeah. So, no, that would be 91 Sting because 92. I left. Uh, 92, one of them. 92. Yeah, I left, I left 92. So, okay. we, we, we do Sting and then left Sting, MC Sting, and jump on a plane for to do a clash with a guy named uh, Philip Duncan in a Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, okay. Them say that clash was the biggest show, not even Yellow Man show, the big so. I have the video still. So we clash. And then uh, another DJ was you, supposed to fill you, in. You do the clash? Yeah, man. Me, them in a DJ, big man. Them in a big clash. I clash with every sound that you can think of. Every sound? Every sound. And none of them never kill me. Yeah? Not one. Of, ask Sky Juice, ask Rory. They not can't kill me. So, ask Richie Poo one time. What so the last silver time? Silver Ark, Metro Media. No, we never the Silver Ark. We never the Silver Ark. Yes, Richie Poo still. No, Richie. No, that, that no. Richie Poo. Exodus. Yeah. When was, yeah, Exodus. yeah. 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 Okay. No, when he was on. When he was on acoustic. Acoustic. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 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 We play okay. one part and him I tell me say boy I'm him, him and him friend him I say yo we'll beat you and I say why you tell me say you beat me normally if you beat a sound you know it is unquestionable the last time we and Rory playing at Skateland. Him come out and say, Yo, well, Stone Love win. I say, But Rory, if you have to come tell me, say, and you win, something wrong. Yeah. So, it better you say it's a draw. You know? Because at that session, I go at Jamis, because Jamis and me are bridging. I'm going to play Pretty Looks that. Done. Major McGill. And that was the first time it played. You premiered Pretty Looks Done. What do you mean? I'm, 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 In a I'm, clash. I know that are the only tune I would draw. Yeah. We, play, we premier. Nobody in a premier tune like me between radio and sound system. Dennis Howard. <laughs> Listen, you hear people talk. Ask anyone in terms of who, were, who was around, like the sound system and them, Jimmy yeah. Metro, Weepo, all of them. Ask them. When it comes to I radio, we can list all I tune them where, where we first play. Especially in the nineties, all of the dance hall show them how we first play them. All of the reggae show them how we first play them. You know? Uh, them so plenty my can remember them from yeah, when to sure. you name them. We used to we used to be the, because that was one of the when you're coming and with a new radio station and you have to come with something new. Different. So that was one of the things them where we used to we used to do what we call IRFM exclusive. And we play them first, and we play them for a little while before everybody else. Mm. You know what I say? And my show was a show to do it. Last time we had one Sky Juice play. Cap, Sky Juice, I'm a bridge, you know, Cap. Sky Juice used to be in our dance, used to, used to train my dance group, you know. He used to train a dance group. Sky Juice was a dancer. You know, so I know all of that, man. Okay. Yeah. He used yeah. to train my dance group, my dance group, when we had a little youth named Black Magic. So I tell you, so the last, the, 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 one, the last time we had Sky Juice kind of. Toss up. A toss up. <laughs> him, him, when him done, him say, "You yeah, play good. You yeah, play good." <laughs> but me know Sky do some long time because yeah. him was the, 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 the him used to be the tutor for my dance group Black Magic when we in the in the seventies. Mm. 
Mm. You, know, you had a dance with me. I'm yeah, black man, black magic. magic. Yeah. All right, I never know yeah. that. Yeah, man. So we appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You so used to dance. We used to dance. dance, dance with... Yeah, man. Funky. Them time, everybody had funky dance. You know. But, but now, then they said everything about yeah. the musical. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. man. Yeah, man. We used to dance at school. Black magic. We used to dance at schools and, and stuff. Schedules. You used to teach a Yeah, yeah, dance. yeah. And I was like, well, like a manager. He was like the, he was like the, 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 the mentor. Huh? Sky Juice, yeah. Yeah, man. Interesting. So then, then him come into sound system yeah. business and, 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 and the rest is history. Rest is I history. tell you now, look, I tell you this one. Me and Sky Juice supposed to do a clash when me there at IRF. Because me had a clash with everybody. Owen Brown, me had a clash all over the world mm. and stuff. Philip Duncan everywhere. Uh huh. So, I decided to say, Susie used to, Susie Q, Susie Q used to hang out with me. So, them say, yo, you for the, you for the, them want, who want you for this clash, you know, is in Linstead. So, I said, I don't do it. I said, Susie, are you going to do it, you know? Them time the Susie you know, never play a tune in her life. <laughs> so, I said, Susie, are you going to do it, you know? Go, go do it. She said, oh, I'm going to do it. I don't know nothing about this. I said, yo, are you going to do it? I could line up Courtney, you get some get dubs. dubs. Me tell you what to do. She kills Sky Juice. Kill Sky Juice. Yes, man. Her <laughs> <laughs> instead. Yeah. I saw she get into radio. Oh. I start doing what she had done. She was the accountant at Irie FM. Susie Q. Susie Q was, Q was the accountant. Yeah. At Irie. Yeah. I get to her in a sound killer. And Carl Young <laughs> said, he might go bring her on. And him bring her on. Mighty Mike. Mighty Mike used to work at Acropolis as a DJ. I used to work, Paul Enneva, who is a director of IRFM. Well, like, my team, I used to work as a police, as a DJ at Oche. Yeah, that's where I start. <laughs> yeah. He was the DJ, resident DJ at Acropolis. Paul Enneva, who owned Acropolis, wrote me in for the start of them after work jam, which was one of the greatest experiences we have in terms of playing. Mm. Every Friday, me used to play Acropolis, then I play a silks. No, I play a silks first. No. Acropolis first, then we got Silks, uh, 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 the, the hotel down the road. Jamaica and then, Grand. yeah, no, not Jamaica no. Grand. What the name? I don't remember what the name is. Down the road. Silks was a famous club. And then now, after I do that, I drive, come into town and come to uh, uh, Don Robin Avenue and, and a Springfield Club Springfield. and come play. So for the, for the Friday night, I play a street club. Yeah. <laughs> You see? Right, so, right, right. so no, Mighty Mike used to, in, in them time, them name Michael Jones. <laughs> Michael used to work at the, at the, at Acropolis. Well, so mm. me and him build up a relationship. So Bob Clark used to do the oldest thing right. on, a, on, a, on a Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. But he only used to play 60s music. I mean, I said, Bob, why you don't play 70s music? And Baba said, yo, I don't know that, you know, I'm a, me a cox, man. <laughs> I don't play that. So I said, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to prove to Bob that he can play all this music, 70s music. 70s. And I said, all right, you know what? I'm going to turn my Wednesday into 70s, 80s. Okay. So I called it the sounds of the 70s and, and 80s. 80s. You know where I got that name from? When I was at JBC. Slide on bar, them used to taxi label, used to have a, a, a record show, paid for a record show that John Weakling used to, de, to do. And it was called The Sounds of the 80s. Oh. And him do an album, and they did an album called The Sounds of the 80s. So when me I try to find a name feed, I call it The Sounds of the, the 70s, 70s and, and 80s. 80s. Before I come up with that, you know, there was no category of music named 70s, 80s music. You know. Because of Bob Clark that at me, you know. Okay. So I said, well, we call it sounds like the 70s and 80s. And we start playing, and the thing got blew up. Till me start have guests, steal it, steal it, them come down, come play. Oh, yeah. All kind of people come, come play, because, you know, steal it, bad right, pan, right, right. pan, pan, all music, you know. So all kind of people come play. So I said, Mikey, come, come play. Because I wanted to do what I had done at, at Radio 2 to bring in selector, the selectors. Like bring in Marla and Young. Yeah, and all of them, man, there. And Donovan Dakers, too. Because oh. Donovan started too, <laughs> you see? But you know, me bringing Donovan, oh, okay. it was a, started. yeah, you see? But we know Donovan from a long time because he used to work with, with a, 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 the, 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 one of the supervisors named Ozzy, Ozzy, Ozzy Harvey, mm -hmm. you see? So, me wanted to do it, but Carl Young, I resisted. So I said, all right, you know what I'm going to do? I said, Mikey, 
come come play upon the sounds of the seventies and eighties. And he might play. So meanwhile he might play. My walk come down from the studio and I go in a call him office. So I say, What are you doing here? You know I play? I said, no, I'm not play. I said, guess who I play up there? And I said, oh, I said, Michael, I play. The same man here, I said, you know, I'm for your station. Yeah. So I said, oh, okay, all right, all right. So I'm listening, I'm listening. So when he realized that Susie now, I groom Susie for, the, for, the, for, for play, and, mm -hmm. play and clash with people and them stuff there, he said, I'm going to put them together. I him name him Mighty Mike, you know? Carl Young. Carl Young name him Mighty Mike. He write it down on a paper and give Susie and say, this is him name. <laughs> and I saw them start, so it was him and, and, and so, Susie till him get him on a show and the rest is history. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Gary G, Gary G was playing at, a, at Sandals where Katty Owen, Katie we take Katty. Mm. Kyle McKenzie go for Katty Owen as a playmaker at Sandals, watch your ears. Because the girls them who work there say, yo, Clyde, the girl have a wicked voice. She need for depth on radio. So Clyde recruit her. her. So she at work now. So she had tell me, say, hey, she, we must, we'll give her a Saturday show. And she said, uh, Dennis, we can the, the, the music where you want to play you now, and my thing, you know. But my brethren will play a sandals named Gary. Yeah, he can't come, come play with me. And I said, yeah, come. And I saw Gary start. Yeah. Yeah. Till Gary start them thing and then Carl say, him don't want him on the station again. And Gary go to England, I think. And then when him come back, him come back. Him, and then me left now and Gary take up my slot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me now. Yeah, yeah. So all right. So you have a clash. You have a clash, I think they know. And my go up and a, and a DJ which will rename nameless was to <laughs> was to sit in for me. Oh, okay. Well, that person went to sting, overslept, and nobody was there for my shift. Uh, so instead of the man say, yo, I mess up, him say, him don't know nothing about it. This was approved by the general manager, you know. This was approved by the general manager. So it's a blatant lie, I tell. But by them time there, me not take from nobody. So Carl Young start realizing he can't bully me and he can't do certain things. So me and him never have no good relationship after a while. Okay. You understand? So he saw this as an opportunity and tell me, say, I'm going to move me and put me at midnight. And I ask him, who and which I have to be nice. I'm going to put me on thing there. I said, keep your work and go in and cuss him off. So he said, all right, fine. Uh, leave. Okay. And I left. Yeah, I son. Because we don't take check. <laughs> so I see you end up at class. No. Oh. I went back to, 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 to Radio, 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 Radio 1. Okay. Because they were trying, Gladstone Wilson was trying to recruit me mm. before that. Okay. Ken Williams was trying to recruit me in New York. Mm. While my day at IRFM, he wanted me to come up, come work with him station in a New York. And, I, and, and Gladstone, because me and Gladstone are brethren from a long time, I said, why not come back a radio too? So when I left, I go back a radio too and start and carry my show with me. Because, you remember me telling you, you know? So was that myself? Is that no, no. Ready Magic. I show the name Ready Magic. Okay. But I'm my own. Because remember, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't. A contract worker? I'm a, my, my, my check came in my company's name. Oh. Yeah. So, no check used to come in my name that paid me. Uh, it was Jamento Productions. Jamento. You understand? So, we tell us about entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, I go on from them time. Bubble. There. Yeah. Uh. You know? So, I said, all right, I carry my name with me. And I carried the name Ready Magic to JBC. And so, I got the Saturday slot from, I say, 10 or 8 till 2 o'clock. And so I, I did that. And then that expanded into doing an entertainment show with G. Fitz Bartley called Entertainment Focus. And then we start doing a, a nightclub thing where we did got named Hot Tracks. Hot Tracks. Yeah. And then now, again, the bulletin start. We supposed to move from one club that was remained nameless because they were very getting unethical, mm -hmm. and so I had I had make some arrangements to move to another club. 
and then the unethical people them basically say, oh, they want us back there, and the person in charge say, oh, I have to go back, and I say, I'm not going back. Uh, so have a good life, <laughs> and see you. And you're gone. I'm gone, and leave that. And then now, the club, the person that I contacted, I go back to them and tell them, say, listen, this thing is not going to work. And I say, sorry about that. I say, listen, we need somebody to do, this is Hilton, you know, okay. junk on the lounge. Junk on the lounge. Okay. What, what, what can we do? Do you have any solution for my Thursday? I say, oh, you want me to do something for your Thursday? I say, yeah. I just, you know, you know, you know what show I'm going to do? The only show on college sounds are like the 70s. <laughs> and so I take over the running of junk on the lounge and the entertainment for junk on the lounge. <laughs> so we used to do live shows. We used to do uh, the where did girl where the girl and did name some uh, some calendar girls. All yeah. kind of different shows we, we do we, when when the big arts them come down them do a, a segment in there. So Fourth Street Sisters, Leroy Sibley's, all kind of, 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 of performance and stuff. And then we used to have a Latin night, and then we used to have the oldest night, and then the Friday night the after work jam. Mm. So we used to run that for for a little while. By the time, by that time now, may I work at KLS, may I work at Jamaica Observer, and then I go back at TVJ. Oh, you're this a stint at New Stark as well? Yeah. Oh, okay, late, that's a late at all. Yeah, that was late, late down. Oh, so you were at Observer as well? Yeah, man, I was a columnist. Uh -huh. yes, Entertainment yes, yes. columnist. That true. That yeah. true. So I'm the only one, the only one that simultaneously work at a TV station, a, a newspaper, station. and a radio station, and they are, co and they are competing. Competing yeah. So I did an Observer, I did a KLS, and I did a uh, TVJ. TVJ. Uh, the, that is the Mantar. Mantar yeah. 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 I remember Mantar. Yeah. I was a little boy, so what I remember. <laughs> 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 I remember yeah. very well. Yeah, it's still going because they're still the rebroadcast. Yeah. Oh, they're still the rebroadcast. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You did some artist management. You managed Tanya Stevens. Mm -hmm. You managed Mr. G. Goofy. Yeah, yeah. You managed. Um, I remember who was our fighter. Anthony Red Rose. You manage Red Rose? Man, yeah. I know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Peter L Lloyd. Peter Lloyd. Live Wire. Live Wire. Yeah, I know yeah, Live Wire. Live Wire. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, man. Yeah, man, everything in the music. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And was part of the management team for Morgan Heritage because oh, I, I started. Oh, publish. Oh, no, you, were, you, were, you, were, you weren't only there, publicist. Not, not only. <clears> because, in a sense, in terms of the, 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 the early artist development, I was critical in that because. Okay. Image <coughs> carrying them to the producers like Bobby Digital. I carry them to, I, I won't call him name. First producer, I call, call, bring them to him, do one song and decide, say, I don't know what to do with this Rasta group. And then me and Bobby sit down and say, Yo, this is the situation. We're going to groom the, the group. Yeah? A DJ was there when I carried them to Bobby Digital. And he's a popular DJ. Sat in the, I introduced him to Bobby Digital and they became very good friends. He worked at IRFM and I carried the, the, the Morgan clan in their bus and said, Bobby, this little group here, more I meet them. This is his father, Denroy, because you know everybody right, know right, Denroy. Right, so right, right. that make it easier. And I said, dude, meet them little youth here. And the man looked on them and turned his face. And never and disrespect them. So them time they don't know I'm not yet, you know, them the record not tune with. They had some tune, they had a tune in return of God's song and I am Rasta. But they, they had produced them. Mm. And I mean, I work with them, but them, them never get the kind of traction where they're supposed to get. So I said, all right, we have to work with Jamaican producers. One producer, I made it take them to a legendary producer and I said, I'm going work with them already and I'm, I'm not mm. necessarily want to work with them again at that time because I'm busy. Right. So, when I took them out of the studio and I'm going to them bus, because I'm mean, the deflated type of vibe on them, and I said, listen, you see what I'm a while ago? Don't worry about that. So the same man there, we're kind of ignoring him, he will be one of the champions of your music when, in a, when, when things start bubbling. Don't worry yourself. Same thing. So said, so done. You understand? One. One other DJ tell me, say, when well, I work with them, Lord Jesus, man, they might try too hard, man. They might try too they hard. They might try too hard. Every minute you bring more tune, plug give me. If I tell you how, oh, <laughs> you'd be shocked. <laughs> you hear the one, yeah? Another, at another station, said to me, say, 
Yo, the lead singer here can't sing, you know. Uh, so Peter can't sing. A DJ tell me that. So you, sometimes, you see, sometimes people don't understand when you are working with an artist as a manager mm. or as a consultant or as a publicist, the crap where you have to go through them, you know. Sometimes you can't tell them what people are tell, tell you, you know. Which is true, which is true. You understand? Because I've never said that to Peter, <laughs> you know. <laughs> At that time, I would tell him that. Right, right. You understand? And, and, and if I tell you who would tell me, so then I try it too hard. You, you drop down, <laughs> you see? So, and, and then the first, when, when, after we do the album, Protect Us, Ja, Protect us. and I did them time that I'm still working at, at, at uh, John Connor Lounge. Mm. So I did the launch at John Connor Lounge. Makes sense. So, you know, I rasta them. So them have them Alta and no liquor. One journalist tell me no ends up bad word. Yo, what kind of idiot thing this? No liquor? How are you going? You know me have to do? Me have to go to the outside bar and buy two guineas and, and squeeze it and give it. You see? That album launch repeated on, 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 on stage for most about three weeks straight mm. because everybody was blown away. So one of the other print journalists them come to me, who always called me and I say, you like a Rasta group. How are you going with a like a Rasta group there? She called me and said, you like a Rasta group, bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see? Yeah, man. <laughs> you are also credited as a... Grammy nominated producer. Yeah. What I cannot tell you is which body I work. Oh, it is from the Stir It Up album. The Stir It Up album that was done by Columbia. I have a track on it. Oh, so, yeah. So, you had, you had, not, you had, uh, you had, what's your name there? Uh, my tune was a tonerable tune named Party Jam. Party Jam. And then you had people like Diana King. She did Stir It Up and a bunch of other people, including Brantford Marcellus on the album. Mm -hmm. So it was nominated for Reggae Album of the Year. Oh, which yeah. year was that? I think it was 93. 93? Yeah. OK, because mm. I know you have that to your name and nomination, yeah. but yeah. I did not know yeah, which body I was. The Stir It Up album, Stir man. It up. Yeah. The compilation no, album. That, yeah, some bad tune upon it, man. And it I've never listened to that. To yeah, and it brisset have a tune on it, yeah, too. Uh, and I can't remember. Oh, here comes that step on it too. Yeah, Aineka Mose. Yeah, the original yeah. version, yeah. not the remix by okay. Salam Remy. Okay. The original version, version of Here Comes That Step okay. on it. Okay, I've never got to check that out. Yeah, man. Because I've yeah. never really listened to that piece of work. Yeah, so man. You know what it goes. Yeah. Yeah. You then became general manager for the Cleaner Communications Group responsible for radio services mm. in 2017? 16. 16? Yeah. All right. When, <laughs> at that point in time, you made some decisions mm. that you were publicly flayed for. No, not publicly flayed. Yeah. Just, just, just one individual. One individual? One individual. I remember more than one person when I yeah. asked Dennis. Yeah. A lot of artists were asking for Dennis to be fired. You, you tell me them. Apart from the one that was vocal. Which Tell one? Me. Actian T or Beanie Man? Oh. Oh, them two there? Yeah. Yeah, but, 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 but name another Other artist. People, man. A lot of the disc jocks and hits and fame yeah. left. Yeah. But that, but and that, were that, livid. That, yeah, but that, wasn't, but that wasn't because of that. Really? No. It's because things like the upper... All right, give you an example. When you... I'll say it this way. When you are used to having your way mm -hmm. and having to exploit the, the place that you work where you can promote all of your parties that you are playing and and you can you can you can uh, play what you feel like when you want to play it and when those things are changed and I'm saying to you hey if you are going to promote play the, 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 the places that you are playing Make them spend money because the other stations don't allow you to, don't allow their announcers to promote parties and sessions on their station without it being paid, paid for. for. So those things were cut out. Oh. We instituted rules where songs were streamlined and passed before you play it. Okay. And because of that, we never had an infringement for two years straight the from the Broadcast Commission, commission okay. which was unheard of before. All right. So when you are 
ruffled in terms of the way you used to operate, you are going to get opposition. Pushback, resistance. Or pushback. But when people left, you know what happened? Our listenership increased consistently while I was there. Mm. So even though people who think that they were very popular yeah. and well-known and what have you, left, it never mattered. Because when I went there, the data suggested that nobody was listening to most of them. People were at percentages of 1%, 2% and 4 Nobody was over 8% in any show on those two stations. And it's and fame. Yes. And they were way down at the bottom of the, 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 the ratings consistently. And the stations were losing phenomenal amounts of money. Can't even tell you how much money they was losing at the time. So, again, it is perception. You think, you think if, I, if it was a situation where the, 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 the board wasn't seeing results, they would make it persist. Because one of the things that was said is that Dennis said, mm. no dance and music can't play upon it. It's, it's just a sports station now, sports mm. and something. No, it was Fit, sports and reggae. Sports and reggae, but it's now just sports, no? Yeah. No, no. Just no. sports and reggae, not no, dance yeah, all. Yeah. And, and, and not dance all, not play upon fame. Was that no, it? Man, no, that's, that's ridiculous. Not, no, no, never got so. It was, it was a hit. All right, so let me tell you. Yeah. Let me tell, tell you. Me. You have five radio stations. If you're going to run five stage, stage stations, there's a thing where we talk then about. Then can't overlap. There's, you have to differentiate. You have to have a signature. That makes sense. You have to have differentiate. That makes sense. We're, we're, not, we're not into no popularity contest. You know. right. We're into business. Right. I am a general manager. I am charged with marketing, operations, programming, and everything. So I have to take stations that are flay, failing mm -hmm. out of the dumps. And so it is not a popularity contest. You have to differentiate. So we move fame. fame. What we did with fame is uh, change, include other, I'll give an example. We decided that for fame, we're gonna increase the amount of Afrobeats that play. We're gonna play more reggae. We're gonna play dancehall, but we can't, we're not gonna play the dancehall them where you have to cut out and beep and questionable. There's quality dancehall out there. You're gonna play the hip hop, you're gonna play mumbatan, you're gonna play everything. You're gonna play reggaeton, you're gonna play grime. When I'm at the meeting with the guys, them asking me, one year Mumbatan, grime, yeah. Afrobeats. Man all ask me if you can get quality records from out of Africa. And nobody know why, nobody know why you know read Afrobeats. Mm. And and oh in the streets. The streets is saying, I say, define what the streets is. Because as far as I know, I am running a radio station, not the streets. Mm. And so you got that opposition. But let me tell you, that was early. When things settled down, the, 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 the format that is there at these stations, apart from hits, is still in place. And they're doing well. Fame is in the top 10 consistently now. JBC, uh, RGR is, is a flagship, always did well. We fine tuned it in some little areas and left it. So uh, it was supposed to be of a differentiator because sometimes right. what used to happen, the same song that was playing on, on it was playing on fame. And so it was cannibalizing the thing. Mm -hmm. So what we moved it is to add more sports and then straight reggae. Okay. The most successful station in the, on the planet or in Jamaica is who? IRFM. Uh, what do they play? Reggae, dance. Jesus so. Christ. They don't play. So the, but, but the point is, them play the first two years of IRFM. I mean, if I struggle for play dance hall, reggae was a thing. All right? Mm. So. That's people there said they didn't see it reggae, but dance hall. I don't. Nobody will quite attack that. Now break the amount of reggae artists mm. from in the 80s and dance hall artists as I have. And as work with them. Yes. Manage them, record them, and produce them. Some of the same artists them were run up them out. And me used to pick them up in a them car, in a me car, and carry them to the studio and make other producers start record them and take them serious. We don't we don't have to call the names. No, yeah, you understand? Do that. <laughs> you understand? Yeah, we understand? We used to we used to we used to when them broke, give them money. Mm. 
There was even a petition and change that yeah, but that is an idiot. to get fired. That idiot is, is who, who, who care about them? None of them think they now even really make sense. You know. People yeah. just look hype and, 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 and clout. You understand? So, but the, the sad thing is that a lot of it came from internally because of the disruption of the, 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 the way, the way, the way. The, listen, yeah. I, listen, you know the wickedest part? The same people who went and talked all kind of bad things about me, the same people them come back and tell me. Uh, but I never, I was bigger than that. I never reacted to any of that because that uh, is, is, you know, going down to, to, to their level. Yeah. And, and that's not necessary. I, 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 I am a professional. I don't you went feel to do that. A job and you do the yeah, job. and the thing is, the, I left that place in a better condition than when I went there. That was my role. I was on the board for 10 years at RGR. Yeah. I served on RETV. I served on JNN. I served on the independent radio, which is the radio board. I served on TVJ. My mandate as a director was to after the uh, the, the, the the merger Am amalgamation yeah was to to put them back on on a, on a track it wasn't going to be a permanent situation which i articulated several times and said that tell to them i am a board member i just come for deal with this and then i'm going back to the board which was what was which took place mm -hmm. but after a while while i went back to the board i had some some different uh directions that I wanted to take. So after a while I resigned mm. and, and, and move on from that chapter, you know. So the thing is, as I say, the stations that were failing in a sense, losing money. Became profitable. Well, I don't know how profitable them is now because of the situation, but yes. they were on their way mm. to, to profitability. profitability. And on the books, some were looking in, in, in that way. Mm. And, and, the, and the hemorrhaging, the, certainly the hemorrhaging. Stop. Stop. And, they, 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 and most importantly, the listenership increase. Mm. With the change from re, the change that hits, the first survey came out, we, we were increased by two points. Two percentage points. You see, I won't talk any other thing. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was very brave of you, sir. I mean, a lot of people were saying a lot of things. So yeah. I remember yeah. while well, this was going on. And mm. More artists said some things, but just now remember them are fighting about yeah, yeah. Because some people were. But them now not got to come tell me. Pissed e everybody see me. Yeah, everybody <laughs> see me, and nobody even. That's nobody. Not there. No, man. I, in fact, at, at one point where there was a public pronouncement, other artists were there and they were called out to join the fray mm. and they resisted. And I, I, the amount of calls that I got from artists to say, yo, me know you know that, you know, because I remember say you boss me. And some of them were taught must remember what you do for them. Uh. You know, but this, this is part and parcel of the entertainment business and how people operate. It doesn't faze me. I knew... And I know, I knew what I was about. I had a mandate. I also know what I have achieved. And I'm very proud mm -hmm. of what I have achieved there. You understand? Because at the end of the day, it is not a popularity contest. A business is to be run. It must be organized. If it needs to be reorganized, you reorganize it. By the time I finish, we had mission statement, values, value, value proposition for, for everything. You, all of them stuff there where the, the staff members knew what was the direction of the station. It was a defined stuff. All of this thing was, were written down. We, we were bringing new people. We introduced new programming. And for two years, since I was there for three years, it's two broadcast commission infractions we had. Two. You understand? At one point, I call a broadcast commission and say, yo, on a, on a need for recognize this, you know? Because the stations were on the verge of losing their license because of because the infringement. Yes. So people can't talk where they want to talk. <laughs> you get what I say? You see? You because it's are. selfish interest. Selfish interest. And 
you, oh, you, you being pissed don't mean nothing to me. When I say that we are, we are, um, we, 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 we're gaining listenership. Which is uh, the goal. And we are, are cutting the, 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 the hemorrhaging and looking like we're ending, moving towards profitability. You're okay. I don't care what you want to say. You think when, if I care about what them say, and then the board or the, or the, or the, the managing director say, yo, you're not doing anything, you know, we have to kick you out and, and, and run away. That would be more my concern. Mm. You see, but with, with, and it is expected. Anytime you go into a situation like this, remember, you know, five radio stations, you know, five different, different types of personalities. You know? right. And radio is about ego. It is about greed. It is about selfishness. And, and I'm not saying radio alone. The entertainment and broadcasting and creative space is a lot of that happening. Sure, and when people don't get them away, they are going to talk all kinds of foolishness and do all kinds of stuff and they don't talk about a lot of the times where you have to protect them, a lot of the times how... I, when I went there, we started an extensive training program. Me start I'll teach. Intellectual property, genre development. We we'll make people go back to, to make some of the, the senior DJs them start, run some mixing class and selection class. With the voice and speech, I go from a great Alma Makian. You know, we promote a ton load of people put people in position where they never expect to be in. You understand? Nobody talks about that foolishness, those things. They are talking about the hype. It's the same thing I talk about, that this, there is this hype about our music and our culture that is fake. Fake hype. Fake hype, because we talk about certain things that they're popular and they're not really popular. We talk about the music, how it's really popular and not really popular. I say the record it, it answer. Is, it is manufactured enough at the time. Manufactured. The hype is manufactured. Listen, it is if it's to manipulate a, a YouTube channel and get, and get a song trending. Mm -hmm. And it's trending and it only have like all 5,000, 10,000 views. That's a joke in the scheme of things. Where in a bigger market, a, a song come out and in 30 seconds, it, 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 it stream a million times. Yeah, so man of a hundred and million views, a billion views and song, two billion views, three billion So when you talk about a streaming on YouTube and you only have 3,000 views, it's, it's more hype more than anything else, Flop. you know? And, and, and we have ways to manipulate the system from longer time. And so it, it, it works for people, but it's not a reality. Mm -hmm. And so I don't concern myself with the noise mm -hmm. in terms of... Uh, that, that never even faced me. I went on with my work in, without even, you know, thinking about it. Because I know what I was doing and I know the results that I, what I was getting. Yes. You know? Good. And anybody who will say, anybody is disingenuous, who will say, there is absolutely, I may tell, and I'm, I may not ask nobody. I love, a lot of people love to talk about who them boss and who them do this and who them do that. I am not going to go into that. People know who know. In terms of support for dancehall, when people are fight against the name dancehall, may I push it? You understand? Mm -hmm. When people used to fight it, when, when other radio stations never want to play it. And we're talking about the innocuous yellow man and tune like dancehall. When the, the pro, the, 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 you know where dancehall got its name? It comes from, a, it come from a, a series called the dancehall series. Oh, that yeah? inner city. In a city promotion, started a series called Dancehall. So it starts start off with Dancehall 83, 84. It go up to the 90s. Mike Tomlinson and, 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 and Loy, Loy, Loy Grant. Sugar Minot gave it the name, Dancehall series. Mike Tomlinson went to Sugar Minot and said, Yo, these new songs and the new style, it's different from reggae. So I want to focus on the people them who are doing this style of stuff. And Mikey said to him, what do we call the show? And he said, well, a dance hall around thing now, you know, because he did have, give them in a dance hall style, and dance hall with it. And when them decide for the show, I was at JBC, and them called me and said, yo, we're going to record a commercial. Can you stay over in the studio for record a commercial? You know, voice the commercial? Bugger Brown. 
Yeah. We stayed, spent the whole night I record it. They had to carry me home. I used to live at Lakers Drive, up, up, up Manor Park at the time. And they had to drive me home that night. When we did that commercial, it was passed for JBC. Mm. You know the song we were talking about? I dance all we day, and we play reggae. When it was carried to the other station, them said them don't play them song there. So them can't play the commercial. And out of that, we as radio people and journalists were saying, the music change, the same argument we are going on. Right. We are, so the music change, but so we can't call it reggae. What are we going to call it? Barry Gordon, Winston Williams, myself, Bonnie Spence, included Mikey White, all of us having these conversations in the studio. Them time they had talked about the, the, the nice up the dance, uh, dances are changing, and then some yellow man tunes start come out and all of them people there. Peter Metro and all of them start have songs. I want to know what to call it. Because of that series, named the Dance Hall series, that's where it, it started out as Dance Hall, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. And then it became Dance Hall. You understand? And so the first article that was written, naming it Dance Hall, was done by... Oh God, what's his name again? A journalist. He's, he's not with us anymore. Can't remember his name. Uh, good journalist. I forget his name now. And that, that article was on the first dance hall live, live album. You know who did the first dance hall series? Robert French, Home T4, Michael Palmer. Not even a DJ did upon it. Be a singer. Pure singer. Because the original dance hall stars were singers. Sugar Minot, Johnny Osborne. Tristan Palmer. A little later when King when Yellow Man come round, things kinda change and it went into the DJ direction. So we I have a, I have I have documentation for show you, you know. I can show you the first the first the letter that Loy and Cl and thing they write me and say, Thank you for your contribution to the successful staging of the dance hall, blah 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 blah. And I saw the name pick up. People like Howard McGowan start pick up the name. So it used to be Reggae Dance Hall until it named Dance Hall. There was an uproar as to why you are going to call a music named Dance, dance hall. hall. It took 10 and years. Dance Hall is a space. Big that man. Space. It took 10 years. 10 years. For acceptance. For acceptance. And you know when it was solidified? In you know, the 90s when we start RFM. So when people tell me, crap, the amount of DJ art artists at that time that I helped, Including Half Pint, Junior Reed, Michael Palmer, Eka Mouse, all of them. You understand? Uh, Robert French, uh, uh, Clement Irie, down the name. Where does I go down the name? Where we, in them days, are support. You see? And now, and, 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 go Irie. Not only as a producer, me record most of the the, 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 the 90s DJs and before everybody. Not for them. Producer. As a producer. As a producer. Not for them. Up that, you know. Not for them. Yeah. Yeah. No, before. But me, me, me start record man before they get their first hit tune. Me not even call on him. You see? So, you're going to tell me you now, say, me not like dance hall. When me grow into this music here, me have, me, me, me research it as an academic. That and spread it all over the world, <laughs> yeah. everywhere, Africa, South America, Europe, everywhere, everywhere, the United States, the Caribbean. And because of your selfishness and your greed and your lack of conformity to organization, not rules, structure. organized structure, you can tell me all kind of things. I am dance all. When people tell me, say, I fight against dance all, I say, I can't fight against myself because I am dance all. No, 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 I have no credibility in the music when me have. You understand? Me a sound system operator. Me, 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 me work with enough of the, the early producers, them. Right now, Jamis is going to be honored at some fest. I am going to be the, the person who is going to be on stage with them. Jamis called me and said, yo, I can't do this without you. You need to be up there. That is the kind of respect we have in other business. 
And I tell you, there's a bunch of man used to call me and say, yo, are you break me, you know? You don't know what they're talking about. Me, you know, and that's why I may have respect for some of the artists them. An artist was there at that night. And when them call him name, him just don't even move, him don't even look on them. Because him know the contribution I mean make for him to him career. Mm -hmm. and, and, and constantly over the years. You understand? Because we love the music. But also, me as a man, when I encourage the, the, the foolishness. foolishness. I will talk about standards and a lot of the stuff that I have written in my book and warned against. They've come to pass. Mm. And we are in a stage now where the music is at its worst in terms of... When, when last we have an international hit? So that again. It has its worst. We are at a stage where the music is creatively, at its creatively, worst. Creatively, it is... It is, it is, it is the, so, the, yeah, I told the, 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 I'm on and I get it. The, <laughs> no, I, I said it all the time. I said it all the time. I don't know what you want to say. Yeah. Yeah. I, that's but, but, knowledge. But, but the thing is, that yeah, but the is. thing is, but the thing is, if where is the evidence? So that still. But where is the evidence to suggest anything else? Me, me don't know. YouTube. Tell me. Man, <laughs> man, them tell you them are trying and them are running ground and they sitting there. Where is the evidence? Uh, when have we had an international hit song? Been a while. When have we had a set of artists apart from some of the reggae artists that are constantly touring? Been a while. So what are the measures are we what what measures are we what what are the, what are the indices <laughs> that we are using to say that the music is which tell me one big wicked song that you think is a creative tour de force at this point in time yeah none that's just a re that's the truth there's none but we have to instead of we if, instead of instead of say attacking people when people have them opinion because it might my opinion and your opinion might be wrong you know. But, when, but, but the, the, the answer is not to attack us for our opinion. Mm. It's to prove us wrong. Right. Or to say, let us reflect and see if what teach them and Dr. Howard is saying have any merit. We have to be self-reflective. If, if we can't take critique, if you're an artist and you can't take critique, you don't dis you're not an artist. Well, they're an artist then, because you, know, you can't take critique. You're not an artist. I teach artist management. And one of the, the, the I talk about the, the, the develop the, 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 the stages of artistry. And one is to take the decision and say, you, you, you are going to be an artist. Then the next one is to start practice. And you develop your craft. The next one is opening yourself to critique. You find a prototype, you find a prototype as what you want to do if you're going to do a DJ this is how you're going to perform and stuff and the next stage is to open yourself to criticism and criticism means not to big you up and say you're the greatest thing it's to say yo you're not reached nowhere yet you need to do this to improve listen Donny Donny Hathaway the first time him perform live then boo him Donny Hathaway one of the greatest songwriter singer musician that ever lived it he was booed. So come off of the stage, you idiot. You understand? That never deter him. And other artists can tell you how they were treated in the early stage. People tell Toots. Toots tell me, say, when him got to Duke Reed. Duke Reed say, you town to country man. Come back in two years time. Did that deter Toots? Mm -hmm. Sly Dunbar tell me, say, when him used to come at JBC, and if Owen Brown or any of us tell him, say, yo, that tune doesn't sound right, you know, him say, all right, watch me. I'm go back to the studio and to make a tune. Right. And make a tune with sound right. That is how artistry is all about. You have to take criticism. Nobody will fight against you. Nobody will bad mind you. <laughs> you, you, you understand? <laughs> and I go, I go to phrase them. They, 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 they. Yeah, from long time. Yeah, but I go to you know, them, it, more bad mind and certain boy in you know, all of the, 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 the popular lyrics more than anything else. Which is true. No love, no big up, no constructive bad things. Mind. A bad mind and, and certain boy. <laughs> and now a obia and chopping. That's we had that, right. You know, and come on. We, we, we come from a tradition of greatness. Just and creativity, true. melodies that rock the world. True. We cannot, and when, when these were done, it was, it was done under duress. People was criticizing it and saying it was foolishness. It never stopped Jimmy Cliff, it never stopped Bob Marley, it never stopped the Wheelers, it never stopped Peter Tosh, it never stopped Dennis Brown. 
Remember, you know, as you know, the last set of decades since 19, I refer, you know, that reggae and dance all I get the kind of respect where it's supposed to get in a Jamaica, you know. Before that, you know, me witness peep management coming in a studio Boogie and tell man to take off reggae music off a station. Yeah. Me witness that. The IRFM changed that. I would change that with presenting the best of the best whenever I do no foolishness. We were deliberate and played the music that was of the best quality. If it was dancehall, it was the best quality. If it was reggae, it was mm. the best quality. You understand? So there has to be standards. Now, you, you can't just go in one studio and do some foolishness and then expect because you can manipulate because you don't have money. You can manipulate it and, and fool young people to say this hot and that hot. After a while, you're going to fade. Right a now, substance on it. Come on. Listen, when you hear many rivers to cross, eternal. Awesome. When you hear no woman no cry. When you hear ting a ling a ling, too early in the swing. Fuck a fight for dumpling. Booyaka, booyaka. <laughs> Listen, the lyrics might be not serious right right but but in terms of the delivery and the musicality and everything a classic it's classic you know true. trailer load just reality trailer and we can yep. go down the line bite back all kind of stuff and so it, with it's in every genre sense. you have the classics you understand people people will tell you that you know rocksteady no make and 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 scan or make you know the longest well a fool system at all still a make one but most of the rhythm, them, where them I, I use a rock steady. From, see, I mean. A rock steady. Mm. You see? So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Your father did this. Before we forget, I mean, I've been meaning to ask you, production wise, what are some of the successes that you have had? Intimate, Anthony. Anthony Redrus? And, and Bonticula. And Bonticula? Yeah. The earthquake rhythm is mine. Uh, slam Bomb, the answer to Slam with, with Gringo. Um, the, 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 wait, name there again. What else now? Uh, Walk Through Fire, Peter Lloyd, number Peter one. Peter Lloyd, yeah. Um, yeah, number, yeah. Choo, yeah. Choo, choo. Well, well, me forget my number one. <laughs> oh, oh, God. I don't remember most of them. But a bunch, a, a holy patch of man. Garnet Silk, uh, Stacey's in love with you. I can see. This girl is in love with me. I can see. Yeah. Stacey's in love with me. We were in a conversation. No, the truth. Yeah, man. <laughs> Holy patch man. You nice, know? man. Yeah. I never know so the production work was so extensive. Oh, man. No, man. We have Holy Pot rhythms. We have the Slam Bomb rhythm. We have the Earthquake rhythm. We do, we do a full up rhythm. We do, oh, do uh, uptown, the, downtown. The full up. Yeah, we do uptown, downtown. Then we have the, the Summer Love rhythm with Anthony Red Rose, Pinchers, Cabra. Upon a lover's rock rhythm okay. that did mash up England. Okay. Most of my songs me, me get on the, the 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 major compilations in England and and the US. Okay, you know, so, so they're not they're not bigger a yard, but they're bigger abroad. Oh well, may have enough for bigger Jamaica. Okay, which is you know? true. Yeah, so true. you know. And, and I never know what's the production. Me record, me record, me record everybody you can think everybody. of. Everybody. From most of the DJs, we do all of the singers, we do enough of the veterans, Mighty Diamonds, Jimmy Riley, Roddy Thomas, Roddy Pinchers, Thomas. Uh, Wayne Wonder, <laughs> Tony Rebel, Garnet Silk, uh, and, uh, Brian and Tony Gold, Donovan Steele. I mean, give him name. You named Donovan Steele. Yeah. Anthony Red Rose, who don't get no credit for big up a whole heap artist, carried him to me. His name was Howard. Howard, oh, yeah, man. Howard, oh, oh, Howard. And <laughs> True. Me, I do my recordings, and, him, and Rose said, yo, security, I can't sing, you know. So, I got a recording. Rose write two songs. I'm in love with you. Now I'm a different kind of man. And I sang them. Are you feeling, feeling the way I do? So, won't you tell me I'm going to do? And... He write them for him and we record them. One is on the, the cuscus -cus rhythm. Cus -cus. Me have, you know, you know, we have a big tune named Come out of Milan with the first and I know it got no. Come out of Milan, uh, old pan sound. Sound, them nobody like me. Sound, Mickey Stevens and, and Shaggy Wonder Man. Old okay. pan sound. Old Come pan out sound. of the lawn with your old pan sound. We don't want it. We don't want it. You're Jump on a yard. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, man. <laughs> 
So, Ponder read him there, the Cuscus read him yeah. there. Uh, Donovan Steele, though, how are you feeling? So, when they are gussy, I'm going to say, What's your name? He said, How what? I said, No, that can't work. And when they are Lee Crow name, Lee Crow name, I'm going to say, He said, They call me Donovan Steele, you know. And then all of a sudden, I just remember, I just come up and say, Donovan Steele, how that sound? I say, Yeah, that sound good. And I saw him name Donovan Steele. Mm. Yeah. But then if tell me the part I had Listen, a lot maybe. of... Maybe. A maybe lot. Not, maybe, maybe, maybe not. A I lot. interview so much people father this. Yeah, so I know, I know, everything. I know. But I'm saying, <laughs> uh, artists remember stories differently. I call it their narrative arc. Their yeah, narrative arc. Yeah, a narrative arc is, is usually is a film term. It's usually the narrative is that you suffer, you go through all of the struggles, then you peak, and then you get successful. So in the narrative arc of a lot of these artists. personalities, yeah. let's not limit it to, to Art, artists. artists. In a lot of those, in these personalities, your contribution or the reality is not sexy enough. Uh. So by omission or by unconsciousness, a lot of people forget mm -hmm. the real stories. I can tell you about dancers that we, 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 we bring out. We can tell you about a bunch of other people, but you will never hear it. You understand? I understand. Some of your people that you have called my name with never mention that I manage them in their stories. Yeah. And I, I understand perfectly. It is not intentional sometimes. Mm. It's just that you're telling a story Correct. and you <laughs> want yeah. your story to be engaging in a particular way and maybe talking about... And, and you, sometimes you don't forget to. Mm. So uh, uh, it's, not a, it's not a major issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so and, we'll, a, and this is a global thing. It's yeah. a global thing. Yeah, it's a global I, thing. I, have observed, I have been observing yeah. these things too. You understand? Because yeah. I'll do an interview and I'm like, I'm teach. I like telling them. I saw you going on this and so I realized. I, but I'm gonna tell film story. Yeah. Film way. I Leave him alone. Story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So now I tell people, say, but it's not my story. Yeah. Them tell him story. So the fans who know now yeah. treat with that. It's yeah. not my story. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. me tell my story, me tell my yeah, story. Yeah. 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 tell people. But story. but everybody have them voice, so you can't. Right. Right. You can't. You, you see, if a man, apart from a man, tell a, a blatant evil lie on you. Right. No foul, no harm. You don't have to mention everything. Yeah. You have served with distinction in many areas. Yeah? It's me can't remember the man right up on my head. You were let me take up a paper and read it. <laughs> Senior advisor in the Ministry of Culture. Yeah. We, who was the minister at the time? Lisa Hannah. Lisa. Yeah. That's where we initiated the Creative City initiative. And the 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 reggae as a as a intangible cultural heritage. Mm. Yeah, that's where it, 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 it. So it started out with 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 Minister Hannah, as she was at the time. But I was also on the entertainment advisory board. Okay. So I also that time junior minister was Damian Crawford. Okay. So I suggested that we start the uh, the, the process to get the designation because in my studies that's what I do. I understand them stuff there. I want to know the importance of the Creative City Network. And so I prepared a paper, a call to action paper, to, to basically say, this is the reason why I was supposed to be part of the network. It took, took, it took two years. So I was the first chairman of the, the, the Creative City uh, Committee. Then Dr. Naya took over. But when by that time, I was still on the committee. So we, with a bunch of other people on the committee, wrote the, 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 the paper to apply for the position. And we got it. And even then, again, people were saying, you sure we want to do this? You think we're ready for this? Why we don't try to do it next year or next two years? And people had to say, yo, nothing beat, but a, nothing beat a, a try, try but a failure. Mm. And we, what, the first time we do, we got it. But I think I, what, what concerns me is that we're misinterpreting the Creative City Initiative. It is an initiative that uses creativity to regenerate underdeveloped areas. Okay. And so we're not placing enough emphasis on that. What we are doing is celebrating. Always a creative city for music. That's not what the network is. There's a network of, of 
people in various various countries mm -hmm. that are part of the network where that we should be working with exchanging ideas doing cultural exchange and all kind of stuff and i'm afraid a lot of that is not happening you know because yeah. it's jamaica we live so what can i say you were also the chairman of the jcdc at one point in yeah time. yeah you know you know the board that it is <laughs> i've been on many boards yeah so I was, I, I, was, I was one of the longest serving board members at Jaipo. I just recently gave that up. So I was like on the board for probably about eight to nine years. So that's intellectual property right. because that's mm -hmm. a part of my expertise. Too. Right. And I served twice on the entertainment advisory board, once on the Alona Samba and then on the MacNeil. Then I served on CPTC on the Babsy Grange. And I served on Jaipo in, on the various administrations, uh, JCDC, I was a council member at the, the Institute of Jamaica. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And of course, I, I mentioned the, 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 the corporate boards that I've been on. Yes. You have also lectured, I think you're still lecturing at the University yeah, yeah, of the West Indies. Yeah. Yeah. You have lectured at UTEC. Yeah. You have lectured at VDTI. VTDI. VD no, VTDI. Let me get VDI. Yeah. So you have also lectured at UCC. Yeah. And you are doing some work down at Alpha. Yes. Sound system course. Yeah. I'm very yeah. interested in, in, in getting some info on that. Okay. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you, so I forgot to probably do a follow up. I yeah. want, because I want to talk to you about the importance of sound system to the culture yeah. and also the evolution of the music from. Mentor, yeah, man. Two over there, yeah, so man, we, no I problem. forgot to do some more. Right, no problem, no problem. Work. I yeah. just can't encapsulate, yeah. yeah, all of that. Yeah, Zane, yeah, you also treat with your own online radio station, yeah, it's called Rhythm, Rhythm One, Rhythm One, Rhythm One, uh, and then I have a magazine, uh, Rhythm Style Magazine. Oh, I, I thought the radio station was Rhythm Force, or something. No, man, no, oh, no, Rhythm, Rhythm Force is the company, Rhythm Force is it's the a media company. company, yeah. So, under the media company, you have the the, the radio station, which is Rhythm One Radio. Okay. And then you have the magazine, which is a digital magazine. It's a digital media. So you have Rhythm Style Magazine, and then you have the, the podcast, Echoes in the Bone. Echoes in the Bone. Yeah. So, so the podcast talks about culture, entrepreneurship, and technology. And of course, the, both the radio station and the magazine is about black culture. And the podcast is on which platform? Every platform. All of them. All of them. All of them. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, man. I, I even, in fact, let me tell you, I, I, I just, a company just contacted me uh, and, and basically invited me to come on the platform and them set up everything. Them find photo, them find the doc, everything, you know, it, just recently. So every platform you can think of, the main ones, them Stitcher, Pod, Podomatic, I'm even on Boom Play and all of these. That Boom Play is like, I think, in, in, in Africa. Okay. Yeah. Global. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I would have found the, 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 the India one, too. Oh. You are the managing director for the Institute of Cultural Policy and Innovation? Yeah. What is that about? It's an a, it's a, it's a, a incubator <laughs> and a training yeah. institution. It, it does a couple things. It... it, 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 it encourages cultural policy. We always uh, 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 advocate for better policies in terms of, of culture. We are champions of culture, and we see culture as the future of Jamaica in terms of economic development. It's our strength, and so we need to get the policies in place. We need a proper uh, uh, noise abatement act. We need like a policy on nighttime entertainment. We need to develop a music, a music ecosystem yeah. for it's Jamaica. It's aligned to the government? No, 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 man. In, it's an advocacy in, independent oh. group, uh, company. Okay. So th that's the advocacy part of it. But it also does training. So the training in, in events management, intellectual property management, project management. Uh, and then it's also an incubator. I'm a trained road wheel business advisor and so we 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 help uh, small companies and i and i love to focus on creatives, creatives to set them up 
and, 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 and scale them, organize them mm -hmm. in terms of them business structure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man, no problem, man. I work, I work, uh, I, 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 I don't really tell people the clients that I work with in yeah. the industry because you know confidentiality and stuff. Me, 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 I got this over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, I have, I've done some of the top people in the business. I train them in terms of event management. I've, I, my clients include KCC, Grace, UTEC. Uh, UCC, uh, JTB, TEF, all of these companies have trained their individuals in, in, event, in event management. management. And I've trained people in, in, in intellectual property. And I've worked with record companies and production companies to teach them about the business. I've, I've, I've done consultancy work with managers to teach them how to become managers. I just, just started with one recently, you know. And I just completed a company, uh, uh, a record company in Jamaica, where I taught the producer, all of the people, the, in, the intricacies of record deal, streaming, all of them stuff there. We do all of them stuff there. And then plus the business side of it, how you do your business plan, you do your marketing, you do your IP, you do your legal thing. Because the growth wheel is a kind of graphic representation of how a business is supposed to run. So it, it, it touch all of the touch points of the, the, the development in, of your business, yeah. and it, it assess where you are, and then you work with, with, uh, with, with the company and strengthen them. That is something that I would you be know? very interested in. Yeah, man. And then what you do? Do you don't do the work. You make them do the work, because right. you give them the task, and you follow up. And so if you're, you're supposed to improve in a marketing, if you hire somebody in a marketing, if you, if you need an intellectual property, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Lawyer? No, no. Intellectual property uh, framework. Okay, framework. Because most companies, they don't have an intellectual property framework. They don't know how to deal with an intellectual property, which is bad because you need to know, you know? I need to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. especially with what, what you right. do. Definitely. You know, so you have a policy as to how you deal with your intellectual property mm -hmm. and how you treat other people's intellectual that property, property. Mm -hmm. and all of them stuff there. And of course, things like your, your standard operating procedures, them type of stuff there. If you want equity financing, I'm a trained equity finance person. <laughs> I, I train trainers yes. for equity financing. Okay. You know, so it's a bunch the of things. multi-talented yeah. The only thing I'm not rich yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, me da, me da, I'm not that that still. I'm not believe that. But yet, look, I can't work for it still. Uh, well, yeah, always so work in always progress. Work, work in progress. You are also mm -hmm. now an accomplished author. Yeah. Your first book, I think, is Ranting from Inside the Dancer. Yes. Interesting name. Mm -hmm. And this year is. Is a copy that yeah. is supposed to be mine. Yeah, man, of course. And um, the yeah. second one is when I remember the creative echo the chamber. Creative echo chamber, yeah. contemporary music production in Jamaica. Yeah. Right, because you said that kind of aligned with the yeah. thesis. The thesis, yeah. Uh, yeah so this was the first piece of work. Yeah. So it's basically an anthology of writings that I did in the Jamaica Observer and other magazines. You know, I was editor for Reggae Times too. No. Reggae Times. Yeah. Dennis Howard. Yeah, man. Editor. Yeah. Didn't know. Wayne Nunes and uh, 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 Trafina Acedo. I was, I was the editor for Reggae Times. Okay. Yeah, and I've worked with Reggae Report, uh, the one that comes out of Miami. I've been doing all of these things for many years. Sometimes I don't even remember. Mm -hmm. You know? So nothing is new in terms of what I've been doing. Because right. We've been doing it for like a little while. I, I can imagine how filled with historical information yeah, man. Books. and the echo the creative echo chamber that yeah. is the the second yeah. second one yeah. and you mentioned off camera that you're working on another piece yeah. of work so the other one is called every beat of the drums every beat of the and drums and it's basically trying to look at genre development in Jamaica because there's no this definitive book that looks at the genre and how they were developed and what is their musical content. You hear a whole heap of anecdotal stuff about who did do what and who did invent but this and me, 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 me. And, and I think it is more a we, we, we 
process in terms of how the music is developed, you know, and so it attempts to look at that and look at some of the ignored uh, music production. Like, give you an example. Nobody talks about gospel music right. in, in, when we talk about our music. But we have a particular type of gospel music that is unique to us because it takes more, not from the, the, the Amer American gospel, it takes from our reggae. traditional uh, folk music and religious right. retentions. Mm. So I call it the boom chaka style. Boom chaka style. Like Coco do and them type of stuff there. And a whole heap of drums and stuff. Like what the doppy band them kinda kinda do. <laughs> you know, and yeah. you have and and, 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 and and it's amazing how popular gospel is. And it rivals any other music. But we don't talk about it. Gospel is the most consumed music in, in Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah. But gospel we don't, is the we don't, most consumed listen. music in Jamaica. How much church in Jamaica? Many. How much church, every seventh day, uh, church have a band? You know that? Yeah. Pentecostal church have a band. Mm -hmm. All right? The two, the, there are three radio stations that play gospel exclusively. Two of them, and sometimes three, are always in the top ten of the, 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 the survey on popular radio stations. You go to most places and people are playing gospel music. If you go on a coronation market right now, gospel are playing, a yeah. gospel are playing. And when you ask the guys them, why you play gospel, why you don't play the hardcore stuff and the other stuff, them, them say the people, them don't want to hear that. They want to hear the gospel. And that make them buy the music. And when they hear the gospel, they will buy the hardcore stuff too. Mm. So in a sense, there are more, if, if, in, if, and, 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 and gospel concerts are held not only on stage or in big events. They are held in schools, they are held in churches, on a regular, more frequent basis than, reggae event, than, than, than any, any, any popular music event. I don't, I don't label with music, dancehall and reggae again. Let us call it popular music. Popular music. Because the, the, the labels are, are... Restrictive? Yeah, and it, no, and it no, represent mm. the, the, the variety of music that we, we, we produce. Produce, which is true. Yeah, Fair that? enough. So gospel is a very important thing. Naya Bingi is another important music what we totally ignore. Jamaican R&B we ignore because there's a... Without Jamaican R&B, you, you couldn't have scale. Right. But we don't talk about because it. Because Jamaican R&B was before, before most scale. of the other genres. Before scale. You understand? Then, if you're talking about... Ballads. Rhythm and blues. Ballad, ballads. Barry Saman started out as a ballad He him have an album named Reggae Soul and a pair ballad up on it and probably one reggae song. The first, probably 10 years of Barry Saman career, him not sing a reggae. You see? You have A.J. Brown, you have a bunch of people who do ballads, but we don't talk about them. Mm. You see? We just talk about reggae and dancehall and it kind of limit the output of Jamaica. Yeah, and we're wider than that. Enough of the stuff a third world used to do. You can't, you can't call it even reggae. reggae. Treasure Love is not a reggae song. Sure. A Stevie Wonder produced that in a big one. Them work with Gambler and Huff. Hold on to love. A Gambler and Huff write it and produce it. So you talk about fusion, reggae night. Are the, are the guy nice. where used to produce Cool and the Gang, the reggae nights, Jimmy Cliff. Jimmy. So why are we not? Uh, and the same guy who... Who, who produce that I'm do, I'm do, I will do anything for you with Denroy Morgan. Why are we not talking about these things? Grace Jones, not the Holy Pop album. The truth, the truth, the truth, Dennis, is that we don't have a lot of musical historians, yeah. cultural historians we, anymore. In we don't have a critical tradition, a music criticism tradition. Mm. We, have, we have a blow smoke up artists rare tradition we will big them up and think so them are god and so you can't critique the music from a from a technical standpoint to say yo this music not good this music great and this is a great artist and this is a mediocre artist so we're not bother with them <laughs> people just put themselves up front and them yeah. say they're my artist and you must them are going to bully you into saying that they're, they're, they're good, good. Even when they're, they're not bully good bully you into saying that, that they're, they're good. good yeah I basically that happened in Jamaica now you know you understand? Them use money. Them use all kind of different things. Them use, them use, them use, uh, what, what them call it? Uh, what, what is something name again? 
Uh, so I can't remember what name. But they use tactics and, 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 and all kind of different ways to get attention. And sometimes lost in that is the talent where them have. Uh, you, 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 right now, most artists are war and are cussing one another. You don't remember what they can do. <laughs> you don't even know the song what they do. The talent because they, 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 they do the, the, the hype and thing. And, and Jamaicans and people all over the world love gossip and them love Ray Ray. True, sir. True a that. tabloid journalism. True we that. love the Ray Ray. We love when we see train wreck. Especially when them are so-called celebrities. So people will always be attracted to, to it. So true. And that is, and that is our dilemma. You know? Dilemma. Yeah. If, you have, if we had a critic, if we had critical tradition and music criticism, and that, this is not even a Jamaica alone, you know, because the same thing happens. It's a global thing. It's a global thing. Music criticism is like, forget you. People want to make money, we put up somebody where they have no talent, pretty them up, put them on a couple of billboard, and everybody believe them a star. You know, it's hype. Do it now. You know, as a global thing because of the, the, the neoliberal capitalist modality that we, we exist under now. Yeah. There's money, 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 push money, and quality. And you think Bob Marley could have survived in a damn time, you know? <laughs> you think Jimmy Cliff could have survived? Couldn't. How? Couldn't. How? I don't feel that. I don't feel that. You, you think Barry Saman could have bust now? No, sir. <laughs> you think? You think Stevie Wonder could have bust now? No. Because <laughs> the hype in anything, brother. And this is not to take away from who is here the now? talented mm. people that talented are around. Talented people are still around. Because people are around. Mm. But it's a system. It is not the individual. And the sometimes system. when you critique, you're critiquing the system. You're not critiquing the, the individual. individual. And people take it out of context and say, you're fighting. And you're bad mind. And you're bad mind. Because <laughs> you're not no money like them. You're, and, you're, and you're broke. You're broke. Yeah, right. And you don't have no money. So you're bad mind. You're bad mind. You know, you know. As I think of it, you well. Yeah, yeah. As I think I, of it, I'm, I'm used to it. We now gloss over these things, yeah. Because you know, it's not many people. I know Copeland Forbes yeah. has written a book. I think he's writing another book. Yeah. So it is few people in 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 the space who are actually trying to to document the real historical yeah. happenings in the music. Mm -hmm. You understand? And not for the youth them now. They're not really interested in our history. They're more interested in a mystery. You understand? So we, yeah. Need, <laughs> yeah. we need people like you who, yeah. who have been there, has mm. been there. You saw it for yourself. Yeah. And while you're here, you can cooperate yeah. that and yeah. make the thing up, man. This book is a very engaging book in terms of, because it's short articles. You can start from the back. You can start in the middle. And you learn so much in terms of my perspective, critique. This is about critical analysis. Mm. You understand? Why this happened, you know, let me tell you why. I was in the business, saw the kind of journalism and writing that was taking place, and I'm saying, no, it's not in a sense. We need critical eyes. We need to be introspective. We need to, to bring to the fore some of the greatness, the Bob Andes, the, 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 the Ernie Smiths, the, 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 the musician, Sly Dunbar, the genius of Sly Dunbar, the genius of... of, of, of of Robbie Shakespeare, the genius of Stephen Stanley as an engineer, you know, the genius of Clive Hunt, the genius of Nine of, 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 of Nine Wholeness, <laughs> yeah, well. you know, Jeffrey Chung, the genius of Stephen McGregor, you know, Dasika, mm -hmm. all of them young people that Tony Kelly, Dave, Dave Kelly, Kelly, all of them people that were do the do the thing, you know, and nobody was really interrogating it. And what we did, we sat back and allowed foreigners name mostly white people to come come do it for us and then we suck it up and say yes a true yes that true. there are more books about our culture and music outside, outside of jamaica, than which, in is jamaica. True, which is true and there are people capable but, of doing it but, but but not only that most of the real collectors of, of yeah. reggae music yeah are not in jamaica yeah most of the vinyl collectors them yeah are out so then they run at some part yeah most of the people the journalists mm. in reggae music yeah we really and truly delve into the music. Yeah. And then Jamaica then. Yeah. Then. Yeah. And there's two things to that. Some people, America have an infrastructure that will allow people to do that. If me go to the, the, the New York Times and tell them, say, yo, I want to write. And I'm a, I'm a trained uh, journalist. Journalist. And I'm also uh, a scholar. And I want to write for you. I'm not getting into that door. 
First thing, me know white. You understand? Yeah. So, somebody who they have my experience who might be white or black American get the, get can it. get that goal. It's just the system. You can't do nothing about it. We have to develop a system that we can encourage. That's why I tell you, so we need a, a music ecosystem. And the music ecosystem is not just studio and an instrument. It is every aspect of the thing. Criticism, music criticism, that's important. Because if you know nobody are criticizing music, and, and when I say criticizing, you know, I don't mean negatively. Right. If you're not critiquing, critiquing the music. The music. All right, so critique Think. the music. Mm. You know, lift it up, box it with it, forget box it, because sometimes it forget box it. Many times. You know, so, so that's part of the, 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 the infrastructure. You need training like Alpha. So you want what we are doing at Alpha, where we even inclu in include sound system, sound system. Because we call the sound system. Jamaica's national instrument. The sound system yeah. is Jamaica's national instrument. Trinidad have the steel, steel pan. pan. We have the sound system. B listen, this is no ordinary feat, you know. Do you realize that we stay right down here, so, in the ghetto of downtown Kingston and create a phenomenon that has changed the way music and entertainment is consumed globally? Mm -hmm. If you read the book, Creative Echo Chamber, wait, wait, it chronicled wait. that. You know, give me a... He has to give me a, you see? So, so we, 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 need to, we, need, we need more alphas. We need more training institutions. We need more ICPI to, 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 to be the incubator for scale a company from a startup to big like any other company that, 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 that we see, like a tough gang, like a Dynamics. And our young, ordinary people, we have the skills them. What we do at UWE now with our program, the Entertainment and Cultural Enterprise Management, and that we do. We teach them, they are managers, and they're, but they are, they are creative managers. So they learn about accounting, they learn about marketing, they learn about how to, to, to run a business, then they learn about the music, then they learn about the music business in terms of contract, them, all of them stuff there. And a, and a significant amount of my students are now entrepreneurs. Mm. But it's some having them own a business. But it's some of them with the school thing in a way. Make yeah. it sound like more go work at school. No, no, no. But, but listen, <laughs> lifelong learning. Yeah, we do that thing. Lifelong we learning. That thing. We lifelong that. learning, that's man. That's that. That's that. That's that. Yeah, that's you know, that. lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. Listen, when I done my PhD, that was 10 years or 11 or 12 years ago. No, more than that. Mm. And you know much things we learned since? <laughs> AI. <laughs> I digital so marketing, yeah. digital marketing. I mean, set up more on a website than a big one. Yes. I mean, set up more on a website. It's easier to set up a website now, but I mean, do it. I mean, do all of my, my podcasting, then I do the editing, me, everything. Me do the, the videos, then I mean, edit them because I'm a trained Video. television right, production. Right, 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 right. So they edit. But, but all of the skills that I have acquired over the years, I it put, I put me in a stead when COVID, I work like rotted. And, 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 and then it was one of the times that I realized that the mind is the most powerful thing. And if you're an information or a knowledge professional, you can't survive a, 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 a pandemic. Because I stay in my yard, I never broke. <laughs> I never, no, let put it this way. I never did feel hungry. Right, you never broke. <laughs> you see? <laughs> you see? We're... Can people acquire mm. ranting from in the dance hall and creative echo chambers? Ah, uh, so it's in the bookstores. Uh, Ian Randall does the, the 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 creative echo chamber, and uh, I publish this myself. So I know I'll self publish. Yeah, self publish. Yeah, man, I publish myself. Can I see me look on the spine and then it's all Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. I publish myself, man. We do everything. <laughs> so we have a, we have a, a, a arm of the company named Jamenta Publishings. Oh, okay. You know, so, so I, 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 I distribute that. But it's in, it's in a lot of the, the bookstores. Mm. It's in the UA bookstore. It's on Amazon and, as well? Yeah, it's on Amazon. So I the both of them are on Amazon. 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 Yeah, but, but we soon sort that out. Do that, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can't have it. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Try, yeah. Yes, true, true, true. Yeah, and, yeah. and any time frame for the, for the third one? Well, it is supposed to be submitted by next February. Oh, okay. So, you know, you know these things take time. Yeah, I forgot to do editing and it's a publisher overseas oh, okay so it, it might be I, I can't tell you when it's gonna come out hopefully th that publisher looks like they are very quick yes 
and very supportive. So it might be in 2024. Okay, and let me tell you why this is important to me, other than the historical value of it. Mm. As somebody who intends to do some writing, yeah. it, it, is be, it would be good to see a man who is in the entertainment space, yeah. how they have approached it, so we can take ideas from it as well. But the, the, the knowledge part of it, as I said, I am always trying to improve my knowledge base. Yeah. Because we're still fairly young in terms of what we do with this year. So, yeah. so a lot of the things I learn as we go. You understand mm, what I'm saying? Yeah. We never live through it like yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. You understand? So but it was learned as you go. It learned as you go for me too, you know. Yeah. When but I, when you, I, you see, you see yeah. no fight, man. You when see I, no yeah, fight. yeah. But it's a get started, sir. When I started in entertainment, I never know about copyright. Right. I had to teach myself. So I had to read and, and go seminars, go workshops. And that's why I might tell people, say, you know, uh, you don't have to go to an institution yeah, to be educated. Ninety-nine percent of what I do now is, yeah. is, is self-taught. Yeah. So you, you you read, but the thing is, you have to be literate and me, comprehend. I kind of look a bit alright. No, not you. I <laughs> mean, in general, that, in general. So yeah, yeah. If, you, if 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 your skills as and reading, understanding, mm -hmm. you can't learn nothing because yeah, you're not yeah. gonna read and understand. Which is true. So that's why when people have this anti-intellectual kind of. Uh, 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 attitude and tell us say you know for go school mm -hmm. and oh you, you go school and you make money you know what people who go school and you, who make money i never go school broke now because them can't understand and them not have the maturity for doing with certain things most people were not have certain level of understanding and the ability to learn when they make money you know all them do is spend it spend <laughs> yeah you know and in our industry People just love spend money because they're for flashy. Keep up with the hype, you know? Yeah, you know. Mm. So. I have done close to 200 interviews to this day, yeah? Mm -hmm. And this interview is one of the most important, and let me tell you why. Zane, we don't have many academics in the music, as far as I know. Yeah. You understand? And we don't I, have many. <laughs> and we don't <laughs> have many people who are as passionate about the music from a historical perspective and sustaining it and also making a business out of it. So this is really important, mm -hmm. you understand? And yeah. a man who would have touched so many different aspects of the entertainment spectrum and excel everywhere, brother. Uh, Casey. Very, very important. Casey. <laughs> very important Casey. interview. All right, sir, Casey. And Camper I'm not going to leave them I'm not going to leave them out. <laughs> um, I sat here for oh, about two hours now, and trust me, it is a lesson in history for me. You mm. understand? So we just go and absorb the thing. And as I said, there are many other things that I would like to speak to you about as it relates to the music. But these things have to be done incrementally because we can't yeah, cover yeah. everything in yeah. a one. Because I really want to talk to you about the the importance and the history of sound system. And also the early labels, the studio one, the channel one, the treasure isle. Yeah. All of them people there, yeah. the, the role of the clans and them people there, clans and echoes, them people. You yeah. understand? So a yeah. whole heap of things we have to cover. For the people out there who want to get in touch with you now, for, for whatever it is, whether yeah. some course in videography or artist management or copyrights mm -hmm. or whatever it is, how them find you? Culturalpolicy.ino at gmail.com. Run that again. Cultural Cultural policy. Policy dot i n n o that, you know, at gmail dot com, com. Mm -hmm. yeah so you can get me there and you can get me you can go on the website icpi dash j a dot com and if you want to book a free consultation a free fifteen minute consultation you can book it on the website oh, okay if you want to go further you will see the rates. <laughs> Don't the wrong with us up there. Don't the yeah. wrong with us up there. Father Dennis, yeah. Sir Dennis, Dr. Dennis or what? Because mm. we have to put on the thing for the man and we, we earn them thing. Yeah? Yeah. So I, say, I am really and truly happy to, to get the opportunity to kind of pick the man's brain. Yeah? And I said, I said, a lot of stuff we don't touch it or we can't touch, but as, as we go down the line. And the man's work is phenomenal, brother, man. Phenomenal. I, 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 am, I give thanks. It, it don't come in like work to me. Sometimes I don't ever remember. I have to thank, because I tell you, I have to thank my parents and the way I was brought up and the support that I got from a bunch of people. Tony Leng, Rex Nettleford. I mean, 
Professor Neko for you sit down here with my father, you know. Oh, yeah. I hung out, yeah, man. And him there at the water, come up and eat cane and sit down with my father and talk to him. So that was the environment that I grew up in. And people at various stages in my life were support and, and, and saw something in me when I oh, yeah. never see it. You know, you so we have, we, have, we have to give thanks for that. Brother, we appreciate this. Musical lesson. Yeah, man. Musical respect, history. Man. And as we say, we have some yeah. other things that we yeah. need to talk about. Yeah. But for now, really and truly, I appreciate the man's contribution to the music, for the music, and with the music, man. We give, give thanks. thanks for that, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, so I mean, I say, blessings every time. Heart of love. Respect. Bless it.